Turn to Bill Stanley. And Well, let me find uh, there's uh, Emmett. I'm assuming it's Senator Emmett. That is correct. I'm gonna hang. Okay. I guess I can admit everyone now, right? Correct. Hi, this is Les Adams. Hello, Delicate Adams. How are you today? Uh, very well. Good. Thank you for having me. Okay, guys, how are we on terms of everybody on that we think is going to be on, or are we still waiting for somebody? I don't see Delegate Murphy, and I don't see Trine Tweedy. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Karen, do you think we should wait for just a minute and see if they're coming on, or should we get started? We have a lot on our docket today, so we want to move as quickly as possible so we're not holding everybody up looking at their computer on these Zoom calls. I don't know if everybody else is doing them to the level and degree that we've been doing them in the General Assembly and otherwise, but it's, uh, it's a lot of computer time. Yeah. But welcome everybody who's here and who I see. Karen, do you think we should uh, move forward? Chris, do you want to, I think we probably can. I just want to make sure we got a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, sir, we do. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm going to call this meeting of the New College Institute Board of Directors first virtual meeting to order. I guess it's our second, but okay. um, yeah, second. So um, I want to welcome everybody who's on um, the Zoom call today, both uh, our valuable staff who have worked so very hard and um and especially everybody who's uh, our new members uh, to the board and especially our returning members as well. Uh, we've had, in spite of uh, COVID's challenges, we've had a very eventful 2020 for NCI and we'll get into that as well. But right now I just wanna welcome everybody here. And if uh, we're all set and ready to go, Ms. Nibblet, if you could call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Senator Bill Stanley. Here. Richard Hall. Here. Senator Emmett Hanger. Here. Delegate Les Adams. Here. Delegate Rodney Willett. Here. Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Naomi Hodge Muse. Here. Trine Tweedy. Cameron, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Niblett. I appreciate that. The, if you all have the uh, virtual meeting agenda, the next thing is a remote board participant action. Karen, what the heck does that mean? Um, that is the instructions that we're supposed to give about the functioning of a remote meeting. Mm. And, and I have those? We are supposed to have those, yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, Ramona, can you help us out a little bit here? Yeah. Yes, basically, um, you just note that you're calling the meeting based on um, the acts of the assembly guidance uh, because you're not able to meet safely physically in a, a one location. You're just acknowledging that. The okay. other protocol is if you had a partial physical meeting, and some virtual participants, you just acknowledge the virtual participants and vote for their participation. Okay, 
And so we're entirely remote. Is that right, Ms. Taylor? Perhaps? Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll just uh, give that, uh, and I thank you, Ms. Taylor, for that great guidance. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're participating in this board of directors meeting remotely due to um, the authority vested by the Commonwealth of Virginia for its uh, divisions, political divisions, to act remotely in certain situations and to undertake those actions which would necessarily be undertaken in an in-person meeting. I think all of us are kind of uh, aware of exactly why we're on a remote uh, and not in a physical board meeting. I was trying to see if we could break through and have an actual um, meeting at the new college, uh, but because of timing and also because of the COVID outbreaks that have occurred again, uh, we decided that this meeting would be uh, remote. This uh, remote action is, is allowed by executive direction, also by the legislature to conduct that business, which is necessary for the functioning of this government agency. And therefore, uh, all votes that will be taken on matters uh, on the agenda uh, will be recorded and also will be binding as if we were in person. Ramona, did I say it as best I could? You did a wonderful job, uh -huh. A plus. I love you, Ramona, you're the best. Um, so let's dive into that. I'm glad I apologize for not knowing exactly what that was about, but uh, wasn't in my packet, but now that I've got it, I'm good to go. <clears throat> um, we have a uh, public comment, which I guess Ramona is permitted with regard to the remote action as item number four. That, is that a mistake or is that part of the remote? It's permitted. I think you all had established protocol for public comment. Okay. Um, you can, um, as long as the, the board allows or gives notice that they are seeking public comment, you can do it either in the physical setting or the remote. Okay, so based on what uh, Ms. Taylor has just said with regard to uh, public comment, certainly any participant is a member of the public who wishes to comment in a period designated by that. Usually at the end of those meetings, uh, we allow for uh, public comment to occur. Uh, if there is someone who would like to comment who is not a member of the board, uh, we're pretty, uh, you know, easygoing on these kind of things. So certainly we like public participation at all times and public comment will be permitted as it would normally be permitted if we were in meeting in person. So hopefully I've said that the right way to Ms. Taylor's, uh, see, she gave me the thumbs Another up. Another A plus. Pardon me, it, it's, uh, it's like riding a bike for the first time, I guess, and, uh, and we'll try to get through this as best I can. So I apologize if it seems, ladies and gentlemen, that um, I fumble a little bit. I try not to, so we can move through this agenda, but uh, we have some very important things to talk about. The first, uh, I assume that uh, as we would in a normal meeting, um, every member of the board knew uh, and new member received uh, minutes of the, July, uh, the June 11, 2020 board meeting minutes. Uh, you should have received those by email. Is there anybody who did not receive a copy who wishes to get a copy who's a member of this board? Hearing none, uh, I will now, uh, if there, are there any corrections or additions proposed to the meeting minutes of June 11, 2020? Hearing none, uh, I would require at this time a motion to approve the June 11, 2020 meeting of the New College Institute Board of Directors. So moved. Motion being made, is there a proper second? Second. Second, properly supporting the motion. Is there any discussion on that motion? Uh, Chairman Stanley, just because this is a little on the technology side, can I please ask for note-taking purposes, if you will call out your name when you make a motion, please? So who made the first motion to accept the minutes? Richard Hall. Okay. And Delegate Adams second that. Thank you very much. All right, very good. So it, it, once again, I'll ask for any discussion of approval of the June 11th, 2020 uh, meeting board minutes. Hearing none, um, we'll do, I, I believe Ms. Niblett, we'll just do this in unison. Uh, if there's an objection, we'll note the objection to the approval of the meeting minutes. You can, they can just say their name. So all in favor of approving the June 11th, 2020 board meeting minutes say, signal by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously and the June 11, 2020 board minutes are approved. We'll now have, um, we are honored to have as a special guest today, Fran Bradford, who serves as the Deputy Secretary of Education and welcome her to this virtual meeting. We wish that we could have seen her in person. 
uh, but we'll take uh, uh, her remarks any way we can get them. And certainly we're very uh, honored to have uh, Ms. Bradford here uh, as the Deputy Secretary of Education. So at that moment, at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, Secretary Bradford. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, and thanks to whoever put up the giant photo of me. That seemed a little... Uh, <laughs> I didn't do it. A little but... unnecessary. I, I would have alerted my parents if I'd known that was going to happen. Um, my, <laughs> uh, just a quick good afternoon to everybody. Um, and first, a thank you to Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Stanley, who I've had the pleasure of working with over many years. Um, in my various capacities and in his role in, in Richmond. Um, and thanks to Karen for letting me join you all for a few minutes this afternoon. I know you all have a full and a meaningful agenda, so I won't take a lot of time, but I am a huge fan of NCI. Uh, having worked for uh, years ago on the draft legislation uh, with now President Reefley of Longwood uh, to create this special, unique and important place. So did not wanna miss an opportunity to, to be here to say thank you. Um, I bring greetings and thanks from the secretary as well to each of you for your service on the board and to the Commonwealth. Um, we know well that these volunteer opportunities come with a lot of time commitment um, and energy, but your input is gonna be critical and has been critical to the continued success of NCI. I also wanna say a huge thanks to the NCI staff. Um, I know this has been a truly challenging time and you all have stepped up to the plate and gone above and beyond as you try to manage COVID as well as all the amazing things that NCI has been working on. Um, which, which brings me to Karen. Um, Karen and I have known each other for many years, um, and I don't know that she feels this way, but I feel that I'm lucky to get to call her a personal friend. Um, and so when she was selected uh, by you right-minded right -minded folks as the uh, interim director, I couldn't have been more excited. Um, and we've already seen the positive results of, of your board's decision to bring Karen on. Um, that said, I do know that she asks a lot of, of you all, um, but no more than she asks of herself. Um, and I know it's gonna be a crazy ride, has been a crazy ride, but thanks to all the work of the folks on this call, the board, the staff, um, and Karen, it's gonna be a, a ride that Virginia will benefit from. Um, and again, Virginia is lucky to have you all on the board and the staff, um, and, and the region is incredibly lucky to have you. Uh, as Karen knows, I'm a huge believer in Virginia's higher ed centers writ large. I try to join their monthly phone calls when I get a chance. Um, all of them are creative, engaged in their communities, working to bring business, business nearby, train workers needed, the, the workers that we need. And you all, and I, I'll say this to the legislators if they promise not to repeat it, we know the higher ed centers are a little more nimble than the, the four-year colleges and universities. Um, and so a really critical role that you all play. Um, in short, especially during these crazy times, places like NCI will be critical in maintaining Virginia's rightful place as the best state for business and to help Virginia surpass and reach its goal of being the best educated state in the nation. Um, those two things are intricately connected. Um, so again, I just say thank you for all that you are doing and letting me be with you for a little bit this afternoon um, and uh, happily turn the agenda back over to the chairman um, and look forward to uh, today's discussion. Very good, and, and, and oh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, this is Karen, if I may, just for a second. Sure. Um, I just wanna thank, sorry, trying to turn my video back on, but it won't, there it goes. Um, I just wanna publicly thank Fran for all that she's done. Um, thanks to her advocacy with the governor's office, um, we were able to receive, you know, gear money and cares money, and we can get into that a little bit later. But had it not been for Fran's advocacy in that space, we would not have gotten a good portion of the funding that we've gotten. So it's been, it's always interesting to see the things from the other side of the coin. So having been in the executive branch and now at an agency looking in the opposite direction, um, it's become abundantly clear the need to have somebody that's an advocacy advocate, just like we do in the legislature to have somebody in the executive branch that's in that role. And I just want to thank Fran for her personal friendship. I'm glad you liked the picture, Fran. That was my doing. We had to do it. Um, but really just want to say thank you for all your advocacy and your hard work, because without you, we would not have had as successful a year as we've had. So thanks a bunch. Thank you. E easy to advocate for you all. Well, and I, and I would join in with the executive director's remarks in saying that, uh, that it has been a wonderful Somehow I've lost my picture. Can you all still see me? Yes, sir, we can. 
Okay, then I'm just gonna act like I'm, uh, I always like seeing you guys, but uh, for some reason it went out. So, um, but, but Fran has been wonderful to work with, uh, uh, really understands the educational needs of Southside, Southwest Virginia, uh, is a real trooper and a real champion for, uh, and a voice for us. And sometimes when, you know, in Southside and Southwest, whether we're legislators or, or even our community, sometimes we feel like we may, we're being left out of the equation. Uh, Fran always makes sure we're a part of it. So I can't thank her enough for that and also her good friendship. And, and she saved my rear end in legislation and probably poorly written in legislation um, made by me a number of times. So uh, uh, she is truly uh, a great uh, person uh, working for the Commonwealth of Virginia and someone that, that I treasure very much. All right, we'll move to my chairman's remarks. And, uh, and basically, I want to pair it off of what the executive director said. First of all, you know, four years ago when, when I started as chairman, um, we didn't own the building. Uh, we were kind of adrift a bit in terms of our purpose and where we were. Our enrollment levels were dropping. Some confidence levels were dropping as well. And, and it, one could even see that um, at the time, uh, uh, the charitable organization that, that helped organize NCI, NCI from the very beginning had suddenly decided prior to my chairmanship that they were going to pull what was called the challenge grant at that time. Uh, the chair, the board at the time uh, really fought hard. Uh, when I became chairman, we decided one of the first things we were going to make sure is that, uh, that NCI owned the building, that there would be a permanent and there would be a permanent commitment uh, from the Commonwealth of Virginia to New College and its purpose and in its future and to the people of Southside and Southwest Virginia, and especially to educating them in a new way to provide a type of education that could not otherwise be achieved and to make sure that it was affordable and available. And we also worked very hard on a plan of action. We worked hard on a long range plan, which we developed. And we also wanted to be nimble that we wanted to offer things that traditional colleges didn't offer. And I think in those four years, we have done just that. And, and, and we were able to bring aboard uh, Executive Director Jackson, uh, who has done an amazing job with that mission and with that goal uh, that this board set forth. We never gave in, we never gave up. And I'm proud to, to say, if you haven't heard it already, we were able to purchase that building this past year uh, at a reduced price. We were able to do so through really the efforts of not just DGS, which I thank uh, very much Lee, for all of the things that they did to bring that home, but also the vice chairman, Richard Hall, who worked extremely hard um, in negotiating that deal and making sure that it was the right deal for Martinsville and Henry County and that it was the right deal uh, for the Commonwealth of Virginia as well. Owning this, biz this building is a big deal. It, has, uh, it changes in terms of where we go directionally. It means that we have more freedom and liberty to make sure that the building fits what we're trying to do and that we can then, uh, we can then pivot and accommodate as we change and as we offer new programs in a way that will always make that, that building a modern uh, instrument for all of us. Senator Stanley, you're muted. Okay. Okay. Suddenly my computer. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, for some reason my computer keeps going back in and out. Um, might be time for a new computer, who knows? So if you can hear me, um, I just wanna thank all people who served on this board during those four years and certainly um, those that served that have, that have left the board uh, and been replaced. Uh, the dedication of this board has been outstanding and unswerving. It has really, I think, transformed New College into where it is and, and positioned today and we have an exceptionally uh, bright future in front of us. We've, we've measured that by some of the successes that we've had, but also the programs that we have uh, that are going to be put in place, um, you know, uh, in the very near future. So uh, that's my opening remarks for that. We do have uh, in the four-year realm, we always have to, or the two-year realm, we always have to elect uh, board officers um, at this time. Uh, I, I'm certainly I, I'm available to serve as chairman again if that is the wishes of this board, but uh, certainly if anyone else seeks the, that position, uh, I'm not going to stand in their way as well. So we have to elect uh, certain officers again. Uh, those are chairman, vice chairman, and what else do we have? To, <laughs> what other nominations? Pardon me, like I keep wanting to say secretary treasurer, but. 
Yes, Secretary. Yep. And then is that it? Are those the three offices we're electing today? Uh, Karen, I, I would think so. Um, Mr. Chairman, we also have committee chairs. I don't know <laughs> if they are handled similarly. This is the first time I've been through this with you guys. So um, I'm not sure if those are, you know, I, I would assume they would need to be appointed as well. I know um, Delegate Adams was chair of the marketing committee. Mm -hmm. um, but I, this, like I said, this is my first round on this one. So I'm not 100% sure. My understanding is we elect officers and then the, uh, the uh, board would then choose and appoint the, uh, the chairmanships for those subcommittees. That's correct. All right, so um, what we'll do is we'll open the nominations at this point in time for chairman of the board. The chairman's role uh, is a two-year uh, opportunity at greatness. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, but um, we'll open that nomination at this point in time for election of the board chairman. This is Richard Hall. I would like to nom nominate you again, Senator Stanley, and appreciate you for your service in the past. Thank you, Mr. Hall. There's a nomination for me to serve as chairman. Is there a second to that nomination? Yes. I'm not, this is Naomi. I second that nomination. Thank you, Naomi. Is uh, That nomination has been seconded. Are there any, uh, any other nominations for chairman? Are there any other nominations for chairman? Are there any other <laughs> nominations for chairman? Please. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to, that we close the nominations? So moved. This is Richard. Okay. And uh, so the nominations uh, for chairman are um, for me to serve another two-year term. Um, all in favor of that, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, same sign. And I am elected the chairman. Thank you guys for the opportunity to serve you for another two years. I'm very humbled by that. It's uh, not a small job, and I take it very seriously. And and our success is so important to us um, in, and for Southside and Southwest Virginia. So I appreciate that. And thank you all for serving as well. Uh, next, we'll do the vice chairman. Is there a nomination? We'll open the role for a nomination of vice chairman. Is there uh, a nomination? I move Danny Marshall. Uh, Danny Marshall. Uh, Naomi, I'd love to be able to nominate Danny Marshall, but he's I after serving on the, after serving on this board since its very inception, uh, he was not reappointed by the, uh, yeah. by the Speaker of the House. That's correct. Okay, well, I'll make a motion, Richard Hall. Motion for Richard Hall. Is there a second to that nomination? Naomi, I'm not hurt that I'm your second choice. It's okay. <laughs> I'll get over that, just so I'll, you know. The chairman will second that nomination. Get over something, honey. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there any other nominations for vice chairman? Hearing none, I have a motion to close the nominations. Second. The motion being made, and we'll say seconded to close the nominations, even though not necessary. Uh, all in favor of, uh, of Richard Hall to serve another two-year term as vice chairman, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And Mr. Hall, you are reelected as vice chairman of, of the board of directors. Now, and then we have the secretarial position. Uh, that was, I believe, uh, filled before by Naomi Hodge-Muse. Is that correct, Naomi? Yes, sir. And uh, do we have, uh, I'll open the nomination, the four nominations at this time. Is there anybody uh, who'd like to put forth a nomination? I would like to re-elect uh, Naomi Muse Hodge in that position. Motion has been made or a nomination has been made of Naomi Hodge-Muse for serving as another term in secretary. Is there any other nominations? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close the nominations? So moved. Motion being made. Is there a second? Second? Second. All right. Hearing a second. All in favor of um, voting for Naomi Hodge-Muse to continue to serve as our wonderful secretary of the Board of Directors of New College Institute signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And congratulations, uh, Ms. Hodge-Muse, and welcome back uh, serving as secretary. You've done an amazing and wonderful job on this board, and I can't thank you enough for it. <clears throat> At this point in time, uh, the board 
we, what we would do is we have um, here, and I think it's three subcommittees. Being a um, marketing subcommittee, do we have three uh, standing committees? Chris, is it three? I believe so, Senator. Okay, and so uh, can you tell us if you do have that in front of you, because I do not have it in front of you, who has been serving as the chairman of those, chairman and vice chairman? Chris? Um, if you'll give me a second, let me go back to the previous years and see if I can find that. If you'll just give me one second. My apologies, Senator. No, my apologies. I'm not as prepared. You gave me all this stuff and I'm not as prepared as I should be. So I apologize. I, I don't like to create problems. Um, I know that uh, Delegate Adams, you were the chairman of the- Marketing committee. Marketing committee. Yes, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's exactly what it is called in the bylaws, but um, right, that was certainly sort of the focus of, of that okay. committee. And um, yeah, and ha happy to continue with that or if someone else wants to work with that either way. If we can get the names of the three committees, then we'll just uh, see if we can't find some unanimity within this board um, to elect chairman who can run those. Um, I have two committees listed in the bylaws, and it's Academic Programs Committee and Educational Outreach Committee. But you're saying you have three committees, right? Yeah, if there's two in the bylaws, then that's what we are going with, Ramona. Okay. Um, I think they've gotten re-termed and re, I mean, in, in daily conversation, I think they've been referred to differently than they are officially in the bylaws. Yeah. So Mr. Mr. Chairman, I would, I would use the two titles that Ramona just called out um, in lieu of what I said was a marketing committee. That would have been the equivalent of the outreach committee. Correct. Thank you. And the first one being the academic committee, is there anyone who's, who's, who would like to serve as committee chair of that committee? Now, I believe what we had before was, who was chairman of that before? That was, uh, I don't have it. Was that Tanya? No, I think it was Dr. Uh, oh, it was, Dr. Hill? Dr. Hill, Dr. Hill was the chairman of that, the academic committee. Um, in description of the academic committee, the academic committee helps and oversees and helps the, with the board of directors basically to make sure that the programs that we're bringing in are, are not only successfully brought in, but successfully executed. Conference call. They also determine uh, what other uh, academic pursuits we should make and how we make sure uh, that we're making this, um, our academic curriculum affordable, and especially with a significant eye towards uh, making sure that all those children in the Martinsville, Southside, Southwest Virginia area, Henry County, uh, who may be living at or below the poverty level uh, that we try to, to see if we can give an economic opportunity and create that educational opportunity for them as is part of our mission. So uh, that's a kind of description of what that academic committee would uh, would be focused on. Certainly it, it would dovetail into what the executive director is doing and, and what she's going to tell us about what she's been doing, what we've been doing. And so uh, is there anyone who would like to serve as chairman of the academic uh, committee here for New College? This is Naomi, I would. Naomi Hodgemuse. All right. So, is there any other person that would like to uh, uh, to seek the chairmanship? Seeing none, because this is non-voting uh, by acclamation, I will determine that the, the board has elected Naomi Hodgemuse to serve in the as the role of chairman of the academic committee. And uh, thank you, Naomi. And uh, that's going to be exciting too, because I know you've got a lot of great ideas. Now, with regard to the outreach committee, um, I believe Les Adams has uh, has has served in that committee, done so very well. It's part of what we've been uh, discussing in terms of outreach is making sure that um, our programs reach the right people, that we bring in the right students, that we're also advertising, that we're marketing properly, um, that, you know, that our logo is prominent and that our presence in the community, not just in the local community, but also throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia and even into the Northern parts of North Carolina, uh, that we are not only just relevant, but also, uh, an institution which those consider when they're thinking about jobs and academic uh, um, curricula or performances that they want to engage in. So uh, is there anyone who would like to be chairman of that, of that committee? Hearing none, uh, Les, would you like to repeat? <clears throat> yes, sir, I, I'm happy to do that. Is there anybody else who'd like to serve as chairman? 
Being done by the powers granted as the, the board, uh, uh, granted by the board to the chairman, I'm gonna declare by acclamation that you're now the chairman of that committee once again. Thank you, Les, and thank you for your service beforehand. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I would like to recognize that Delegate Murphy has joined us. I saw her beautiful face come up a minute ago. So welcome, Delegate Murphy. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Hi, Delegate Murphy. It's always great seeing you. <laughs> Senator, how are you? Doing fine. Wish you were down here in, in uh, Southside, uh, but hopefully when this COVID mess all goes away, we can get you down here in, in the- I'll in love it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for serving as a member of this board. It means a lot to us that you're a part of this. All right, so we've elected the, the board members and officers and the, the committee chairs. <clears throat> I'll just briefly give you an update. You know, there are a lot of good delegates and senators on this call, so they can probably tell you uh, how Richmond uh, was during the general session and then how it was during the 83 or 84 day se special session that we spent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, without belaboring the point, we did have one, um, we had two pieces of business that were before the general assembly uh, that were approved. Uh, one was an increase in the salary range of the uh, of the executive director, and especially that was very important because you know Miss um, Jackson is not from Southside; she's from Pocosin, and uh, having her travel down here certainly bore some expense. So and that brings it also in line uh, with what you see with other executive directors and similar agencies. So we're proud that that was included in the budget, and and we're happy to that the General Assembly made that adjustment. Uh, the second one was a bill that I had sponsored, Senate Bill 313, which was approved unanimously by both House and Senate, and it basically changed uh, the board of directors to, to increase the number of our board from 12 to 15 members, uh, which then jumped up, and it was just to increase the non-legislative members from 7 to 10, uh, based on the fact that uh, we, needed, um, we needed more people on this board that were Representative of, representative of industries across the Commonwealth of Virginia. This was an idea uh, brought to me by um, Executive Director Jackson. And certainly what we wanted to do is have more involvement from more companies. We have local company involvement, local industry involvement in this board of directors. But what we really wanted to do is expand this number uh, so that we could include three more people that would, that would represent a wide range of industries and uh, businesses uh, throughout the, the Commonwealth of Virginia. So. Uh, we put in that, uh, that bill, it passed unanimously, it was signed by the governor. And so now our board of directors has been uh, increased by three non-citizen, I'm sorry, three non-legislative citizen members. And uh, I believe those will be appointed by the governor. And, and Ms. Jackson, have we uh, understood from the executive branch whether three uh, nominations or three appointments have been made by the governor's office? Um, they are in process, Senator. Um, actually, we have six appointments that we, I believe it's five or six that we have to make to accommodate those who, who have gone off. Um, Tanya, Dr. Hill, and then we have three extra seats. That's five. I think we may have one other one. So we've been working actively with Fran and with the governor's office to get those filled as expeditiously as possible. We have not gotten the final appointments yet, but we're actively in that process right now. I've been in contact with the Secretary of the Commonwealth and we're moving forward. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Karen. And, and quite frankly, for all those new members in the House of Delegate members who are new, who are joining us, if you know anybody in your region or area that might fit the bill and might be interested in involving themselves in, in New College and the great things that we're doing, we'd love to have your input. And if you could tell uh, uh, Director Jackson exactly someone you may know from industry throughout the Commonwealth, it might be a good idea to sit on this board. We'd certainly appreciate that as well. Uh, under my chairman's remarks, uh, subsection seven, I also have a bylaws update, but again, a bylaws update? Yes. Uh, I think that's where I, I do my drum roll and take it away. Councillor Taylor, please. <laughs> Hi, Thanks. all. I'm Ramona Taylor. I'm your new council. So this is my first meeting with you all. I'm a senior assistant um, uh, attorney general. Sometimes I tell jokes, sometimes I just growl. Um, I've been with this office for about five years. I previously served as counsel for Virginia State University. And so I'm very familiar with New College Institute, um, having um, monitored or, or observed some of the programs from New College that were part, that Virginia State partnered with you all. 
And so um, the bylaws update is basically to let you know, I generally do a review when I go into a new agency. And luckily my review came after this, uh, that Senate bill 313. And so what I've done is I went through your bylaws to make sure they were consistent with the code, the existing code and uh, made some changes. Some are stylistic because I like the Harvard Blue Book versus Kelly Book of Style, I guess. And the other is to under, uh, on page two under section 4B, I added the new uh, provisions for your, your increased number in your board. That's the most significant change on that. And then I also um, added other changes to be consistent with the code under your section 4C and your section 5B2 just to make sure that you have the provisions that covered um, meeting notices and for your provisions that are required under your meetings. I just added code sections. Um, one of the other significant changes that I made other than making it consistent with code, I added some language that was missing that allowed you to be able to call meetings if the chairman was not available that a majority of the board could call a meeting and then I recommended that uh, on your page five under section eight, you remove the provision. Notice all bylaws changes will be sent to the board 10 days prior to. I know that you all have busy schedules. I, I thought that you might need some flexibility with that provision. So I recommended that that be removed. But all other changes are consistent with the code. And so um, if you want to see a chart of those changes, I can send you, I've, I've developed a chart for that. And I've also set up a, a draft copy with, um, with track changes and without for you to see uh, the recommended changes to your bylaws. Did I do that quickly enough? That was wonderful, perfect, perfect. Perfect, Ms. Taylor, and I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> and, and certainly we'll have to set a meeting. Um, what we can do, I think, is the best way to, to circulate the proposals that, uh, that you've uh, highlighted here just now, and then have the board consider them. And what we'll do is we'll put them on for the next board meeting uh, for the one adoption. Okay. Sometimes and I'll make sure everyone has those copies. And sometimes when we've had changes to the bylaws since I was chairman, what we did was we would appoint a bylaws committee uh, an ad hoc committee to, to look over actually what changes we're making. But now that we have you, Ms. Taylor, I don't see the need of having, and certainly the change you've made of having such a committee, but if you would just circulate those um, through our email chain to our board members and let everybody consider them, what we'll do is make that an agenda item for the next hearing. Or the Excellent, next hearing. thank you, we will do. Perfect, and thank you for doing that. That's, uh, you know, that's the, uh, that's when you know your mechanic gets under there and, and just doing a tune up finds out that there's things that need to be changed to your car and, and makes it run better. So I appreciate that great, greatly. Great, um, thank you. All right, so, so that ends basically all I had here. Um, certainly uh, we're really excited about uh, with the new money from the CARES Act that's coming in, updating the technology, I think, ladies and gentlemen, and, and I'd had discussions as well with the governor's office about it as well. Uh, our, our number in the purchase price uh, was reduced because of the need to replace all of that uh, electronics that was going out of date. Unbelievably that we have one of the most modern buildings and yet the electronics, uh, the IT, the technology was getting out of date. So um, so the number was perfect how it came back in at 1.5 and we had been able to reduce that price by 1.5. And so I'm very grateful to the governors, uh, to the governor and to the executive branch for assisting us in making sure that happened. Uh, what that also did, ladies and gentlemen, was that that gave um, the title holder, the New College Foundation, an enormous, uh, significant infusion of cash, uh, which, of course, we we are working with and will work with to make sure that it, there's a best use of that uh, to make sure that we're providing educational opportunities for those that otherwise might not be able to afford it. Um, but we're certainly glad to have, uh, as a part of the New College Foundation, um, visiting with us today by Zoom, uh, Kevin DeConnick and Simone Red, And so I would love it if you guys would say some words and make a presentation or whatever you have for us. We, we'd love to hear you. And we welcome you. And what we really want to know, I, we really want to do is we want to thank you um, for taking uh, the opportunity to become uh, involved in New College Foundation in the manner that you have. We look forward to a very, um, a very good relationship and a mutually beneficial relationship, not just for New College and not just for the foundation but for the citizens and the, and the young men and women that we serve 
in providing those educational opportunities. So for with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will, I will uh, give the floor to Ms. Red and uh, Mr. DeConinick. Yep, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to speak and I look forward to meeting you in person when the opportunity presents itself. Yes, indeed. Uh, it's been quite a year. I started here February the 19th and my predecessor retired in March the 1st, I believe, and then something called COVID hit in March. So um, I've been kind of stranded to my office, which has been a challenge to get out and meet people, but I've met several people here uh, in today's meeting and um, what a challenge it was to get through. Uh, it was a Herculean task to uh, get the building sale behind us with all the grant transfers and like that. But I think it also created an opportunity for both the New College Foundation and New College Institute to work together on a common goal. And uh, we, we, we both just rolled up our sleeves and, and made those um, grant transfers happen. And long behold, October 23rd came along and the building uh, was sold. So. Um, during this last year, um, I've spent a lot of time just thinking through the transition that we're going to make with our business model, mo moving from a landlord-tenant relationship uh, to uh, one of a traditional foundation. And quite honestly, when I interviewed with Simone Reed, who's on the call when um, she shared with me uh, that this was in the works, that was the position that I wanted to interview for was to um, oversee a traditional foundation as my skill set and my and my interests were not in in uh, maintaining a facility that was not my my uh, passion in life but I'm looking forward I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to this new model that we're growing into um, as you mentioned Senator Stanley this with this infusion of cash we're looking at investing it we have invested all the funds um, and we're, we're going to be growing into a new business model where um, those funds will be used to not only uh, pay for the operating cost here at the foundation, but also to what extent we can put cash back in to NCI to support programs um, that we would like to get behind. So that's the process we've been going through. We um, here earlier in your meeting, you, you elected a number of uh, of new people to committees and like that. And Simone and myself are also looking at um, bringing in some additional talent in our, our leadership roles. And um, just, just to just be staffed with people that have a broad breadth of experience that can help provide insights um, on technology issues and other issues that NCI is, is moving into. Um, you know, someone, um, in fact, I think the first time that I met Karen, and I've had a chance to, to work with Karen um, with the building sale like that, but I liked what she said. And that she said, you know, let's let's not spend a lot of time with the past. Let's let's get moving with the future. And I couldn't agree with that anymore. Um, I kind of look at the past as being, you know, can either be a, a hitching post or a guiding post. And I'm anxious to see what we can do together to support NCI and making the community better. So I'm excited to be here. I'm still trying to figure out how I got here. I was very happy living in Indiana on the lake. And, uh, but my wife's persuasion brought me here because she started a new program over at uh, Averett University. She's, uh, she's uh, started up the Graduate School of Nursing there. And so um, she's been busy trying to get that program going. And I've been busy now over here in Martinsville. So it's been a good transition. I've had a lot of fun. Fantastic. Uh, Simone, I have you down as Simone Red. He says you're Simone Reed. I, I hate if I butchered your name. Red. <laughs> That's Indiana talking. It's Red. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I do want to say um, good afternoon to everyone. And I agree totally with everything that Kevin has said. Um, it was a, a learning curve and learning experience with the sale of the building, but we did get to work with everyone at NCI. And um, I just want to say, I do look forward to a new chapter between both groups and everything that we can get going uh, for the community. Fantastic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, any board member have any questions for Kevin or Simone? If so, pipe in and ask. 
If not, that's usually a good sign. Well, Senator Stanley, this is tell you that. I just want to say I really appreciate hearing the comments, Mr. DeConnick. Um, you know, as those of us who have been on the board here for the past few years know um, how important that perspective is and, and to have it articulated so uh, clearly now and have that kind of support. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the future and wanted to add my voice to that um, uh, uh, to, to that chorus. And uh, so, um, so thank you, sir. And welcome. Thank you. You know, I, Senator Stan, I'd like to make this one comment for what you guys can do to help make us successful. And that is, I, I realize there's going to be times where we stumble and fall because we, we are clearly moving into a new business model. And um, that's going to look different than the past. And I think we're all kind of excited about that. I, I, I encourage you and this team and, and um, uh, Karen's team that when, when strategy sessions, team, work, you know, any type of key meetings are taking place to please consider including us in those meetings so we can, so we can be shoulder to shoulder with you and hear what's going on and um, hear early on to figure out where we can get behind you. So. No, absolutely. And I think that's, you know, Kevin, that, that's been what's lacking previously. I think there were two separate entities, two ships in the same port, but not docked anywhere near each other. And, and over time, um, that relationship became, as you said earlier, nothing more than landlord and tenant. Yeah. And it was not constructive. And those funds, only those funds that were going, that had been raised previously by the previous, exe the previous executive directors when the building was being built, were being kind of put away, but not being utilized to, to help new college. And at the same time, uh, all those revenues that were generated uh, through rent from the state uh, were just going to pay overhead. So there wasn't a lot of activity where new college and new college foundation were meshing. And now that that um, your corpus of your of, of the monies that you're sitting on, which are taxpayer dollars, um, have given you that liberty and freedom not to be the landlord anymore, but also to to be innovative in how we help uh, those people that want an education through new college. Uh, that, that presents a lot of exciting opportunities uh, for new college and for the foundation. Uh, we've always wanted a good relationship with the foundation. We've always invited them to be alongside of us. We've always invited them to be there at our meetings and participate. And so your commitment to, to that participation is great. Uh, and, and we're really looking forward to that, uh, sir. And, and also look, we, you know, when I became chairman four years ago, one of the biggest things was is if a politician knows anything, they know how to raise money and fundraising uh, so that you're not just sitting on that money, that it's a declining balance, um, but that we're replenishing it and growing it. Uh, and also at the same time, advertising uh, new college as we go and seek new funds. We want to we want to assist as a as the institute itself in whatever we can in terms of your fundraising efforts. So we would love to see that as well. We know that there wasn't a lot of fundraising done. Um, by New College Foundation. We'd love to see that as well. In any way we can innovate, any way we can have a, a partnership, and especially whether it be scholarships for, for young men and women who couldn't otherwise afford to go to college from our area or something of that nature. Um, and I'm sure Naomi Hodge Muse will have a list of things that she thinks uh, that we can do together. Uh, then let's, let's partner together. Let's make this not just a new beginning, um, but a real fruitful endeavor uh, where we're really changing um, people's lives here in, in Henry County, in Martinsville, and in Southside, Virginia. Couldn't think of anything more fun to do. Yes, sir. Kevin, this is Richard Hall. Quick question on your staff additions. What are you thinking there? What, what's, what are you guys thinking as you move into this new business model? Well, thanks for the question, Richard. Not necessarily new staff additions, but new additions on the board. Um, some folks with some additional skill sets to kind of round out um, the skill set that's currently on the board. So um, like you guys having this meeting today, kind of your annual meeting, our annual meeting is going to be in a few weeks. And uh, we're going to be bringing on hopefully a couple new uh, folks this year and maybe one or two at the beginning of next year that bring on some additional skills. That's super. <clears throat> hey, any other questions for Simone or Kevin? Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Emmett. Uh, Governor Hanger, yes. Hey, how are you doing today? Doing well, Governor. How are you? Pretty good. You know, in the past, one of the problems that we had was we never had a clear memorandum of understanding as far as the relationship between 
the two boards. Is, is, it, is this a good time to restart that conversation and get something in place? From my side, I believe so. I, I believe it serves as a, as a rudder for a ship. And um, I certainly have given some thought to that, Governor on certain things that I would like to see. That, that was uh, <laughs> that was a clip <laughs> from the chairman there. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm but it does apply. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> okay. Okay, now. Um, but I will agree with Kelvin. That is something that we have been reviewing. Um, and we hope after this um, annual meeting, we'll have something to present. Fantastic. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Chair, not a, not a question. This is Karen. Um, I just want to thank Sa Simone and Kevin for, for working with us the way they have on the transfer of the building um, and the AG's office as well. Uh, Deb Love, who was our former representative. Um, every week we've spent an hour or so on the phone in the trenches together with outside counsel, inside counsel. Um, some days it felt like we took 200 steps backward and some days we you know felt like we took at least two steps forward um and i think when you start a relationship in the in a situation like that you find common ground and you find ways to want to collaborate because i don't think any of us wanted to be on any more of those phone calls than necessary um so i just want to say thank you to them um, we've already been working with kevin um, on some scholarship opportunities um steve keezer on the nci staff went and worked with Kevin and the board um, eventually, it eventually had to go to the NCF board, but we're able to sec help secure some scholarship opportunities for students at the graduate and at the PhD level um, that had quite frankly been left hanging by one of those other organ, another organization that historically had provided funding. <laughs> so we've already found opportunities to work together. And when you hear, um, Matt Lighty, he's going to be given an update on the grants programs that we're engaged in and hope to engage in. He and Kevin, Matt and Kevin have already established a good working relationship that um, we're going to be able to, to leverage and hopefully expand on in the future. So I just wanted to say thank you to both Kevin and Simone for their for their help. Thank you. Fantastic. And Kevin and Simone, we thank you for coming to this uh, Zoom meeting. Hopefully we'll get to meet in person next time. And we really look forward to, to a great working relationship with the foundation and a new beginning uh, that is gonna benefit us all. So thank you so much for what you do and what you're gonna do in the future. So thanks, and, and you're please stay on and, and listen to the rest of the stuff. I think you may want to. Our, our executive director is gonna give you a heads up of exactly where we are, what we've been able to accomplish with, whether it be with uh, Amazon or other, other companies that are making commitments to us. Before I turn it over, um, I have, to Karen, I, I've had conversation with a large um, industry, one of the largest industries in the Commonwealth, uh, who has expressed a, uh, a strong desire to work with New College uh, on programming. Uh, and I believe I told uh, Ms. Jackson about that, but I think we'll have something uh, come to fruition in the not too distant future. But it just exemplifies the changes that have occurred over the past four years that now, you know, instead of us going to companies companies are coming to us and they're bringing their innovation and they're bringing their credential programs and they're bringing their, uh, uh, their industry knowledge to us to make us better. And so it's been quite a transformation in the last four years. And I think what you're now gonna hear from our executive director is now where all of that hard work uh, that we have done as a board and all of that hard work that our staff has done over the years uh, is starting to see a great payday, a great, a good payoff in terms of where we're going and the direction we're taking in the future. And I must commend every single member of the board. Uh, Kevin and Simone, if you haven't seen our board before, we're a very active board. Uh, it's a very powerful board in terms of all the brain power that we bring together. And instead of you know some boards that we have here and that are, people are appointed to are kind of show pony boards and rubber stamps, uh, this board has taken uh, the lead in every instance. Again. Done so much to uh to make a difference for nci and i think it's right here right now and this board also brought uh karen jackson uh to uh, uh to be our interim director and maybe someday we can take off the interim part uh, but right now uh, she has done a masterful job of leading new college in this new direction and even during this pandemic 
And she's got some very exciting things uh, along with the staff to report to the board. So at that time, uh, uh, Madam in Interim Executive Director, I will now turn it over to you, my friend. And I, I hope you see the coffee cup with the steam coming off of it. Um, we've had a lot of that over the last year, trying to keep things moving um, during the pandemic. Um, I would like to thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, for all your hard work with us, all members of the board. Um, it has been a challenge. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it's it's been a been a difficult time, but I think for NCI, it gave us the time that we needed to be able to retool, redirect, um, and to truly, um, really start anew and start afresh in this in this world. And while people were trying to figure out how to pivot from the old way of doing business to the new way of doing business, which involves a lot of virtual learning. Um, we've, we've been very fortunate that the building, the funding that we've gotten through the CARES Act and other sources um, has come at a perfect time. So we've already talked a great deal about a lot of things that are going to be in the, in the interim executive update. But I will tell you, I learned early on that y'all don't want to hear me talk for this long. Nobody does. So what I've done is I've enlisted staff. So I've asked staff members who are intimately involved in leading some of these initiatives to be on and to give you their presentation of what's been happening. Um, I think everybody would agree that we've been running at a thousand miles an hour. There's been very little downtime for any of us, quite frankly, you know, during the pandemic. We briefed you in the past on some of the um, PPE efforts that we had providing PPE to the rural healthcare providers. Um, I think we ended up somewhere around 25, 2600 pieces of PPE distributed. Um, and so we've, we've made the most of a challenging situation. And I think we've done admirably. The staff has risen to the occasion. Not only did we have a lot on our plates, but people had to work um, adjust to teleworking, which is something that had not been a nascent activity in NCI previously. A lot of adjustments, lots going on. You see the coffee cup, it's still steaming. We've still got a lot ahead of us that we're gonna continue to do. Um, I think we've hit the Baldwin building ownership. I would just like, again, to echo and every, all the comments that have been made. Thank Vice Chairman Hall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the AG's office, everybody that has stepped up to, um, to help us take ownership of the building, Kevin Simone. It's, it's done. It's still, we're still trying to adjust to being landlord group that is going to be managing the real estate for us. And so we've now owned the building for about a month and we're getting our feet underneath us. And, you know, anytime you buy a new house, there's things you have to figure out and it's no different in buying this building. It's things we've just had to figure out and we're, we're moving through and doing quite well. So that's enough said about that, except to say thank you to everybody. Um, CARES funding, just a quick update. Um, so far we have gotten um, somewhere around $1.7 million in CARES Act funding alone. Don't, don't think about grant funding for a second, I'm gonna bring Matt Lighty on in just a second to talk to you about the grant situation. Um, the first tranche of money that came through COVID was um, a lot for PPE, a lot for sanitizing, for actually dealing with the COVID situation. Early on, we got $140,000 out of a, an original tranche. Um, the governor had some emergency response monies that he doled out to higher ed and others. And we were able to get $51,500 out of that. Fifty-one five dollars came from the GEAR funding. And then thanks to efforts of the legislature, the, ex the executive branch, um, we were able to get $1.5 million that we'll be using to upgrade the technology in the building. The $1.5 million um, you'll hear a little bit more about later when we have our technology update, um, but we are able to essentially take everything out of the building and, and upgrade it with the funding that we were able to receive through um, CARES Act. So truly without COVID, we really wouldn't have had um, that money, which was um, a blessing that came out of really a curse. 
So on top of that, what I'd like to do is um, ask Matt Lighty, who's also on the call, to um, now talk to you a little bit about our successes with um, some grant writing initiatives that he's been leading. Am I working? Can you hear me? You are working. All right. Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo uh, to start off that it's been really great working with Kevin at the foundation and that, that we have a lot of opportunity to make some progress there. So there's a few here on the, the list and our first real collaborative partnership was, it, it was small, but a really good one, which is $10,000 that Truist just gave uh, through the New College Foundation to the NCI High School Robotics team that's led by Brian Pace. And I don't know if you all are familiar with it, but Brian volunteers every day after school and weekends and takes this team all over the country and they compete and win nationally. They're like the Hoosiers of robotics. Uh, they go up against these big teams with huge sponsorships and win. And Brian needed a new piece of equipment and Truist has given us the funds to buy that. And that'll last for uh, about 10 years and help propel them to the next level. Um, a bigger award was the grant from the Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission, $100,000, and that was for the Amazon Restart Program, so we were successful there. Um, we received a $50,000 award from the Appalachian Regional Commission. Um, that is a Center for Trades Entrepreneurship Planning Grant. Um, I don't know how much level of detail to give on that for you all. Um, Matt, why don't you, since we haven't really had any any information on that provided yet, why don't you go ahead and, and talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, that is a partnership with uh, ODU School of Entrepreneurship and Innovation um, and UVA Weldon Cooper Center. And it is to examine the feasibility of establishing a entrepreneurship program at NCI. This wouldn't do any additional trades training, but the concept is that um, the discussion around entrepreneurship in the Commonwealth tends to focus on high tech industry. But if you go out and start a business, a plumber, a welder, a carpenter, a general contractor, that you are in fact an entrepreneur and there are certain entrepreneurial skill sets to help you launch a business. And that comes from looking around the Commonwealth and the, the need for subcontractors to complete work that they're bringing in crews from as far away from Alabama to complete projects and that we should we should be able to contribute to growing um, a skilled trades pipeline through business ownership um, is one way to possibly do that and so this is really a feasibility study it's a scope and sequence of what a curriculum would look like um, what it would cost uh, with the opportunity to then go back for funds to stand up the first iteration of a Center for Trades Entrepreneurship. And there are none like this in the Commonwealth and to our research, none like this in the United States. So this would be uh, a little new. Um, that's the first three. Uh, we have a million dollar grant pending to the USDA Rural Development Grant for technology infrastructure. So we have, um, like hovering robots and stuff if we get this one, but um, there's a lot of technology infrastructure still pending. And we have $147,000 pending to the Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission. Uh, this is a program that has You're breaking up. Oh, sorry. It, there's a $147,000 request. It's a match um, from the Tobacco Commission for workforce financial aid for students in high demand fields. And so through this grant, this would serve about 48 students pursuing degrees in medical assisting um, and commercial truck drivers licensing. Uh, those are less than six months degrees or certifications um, and they could go right to work. So they're there. And then Kevin and I have had some initial conversations and there's some additional foundation grants uh, that we plan to pursue jointly and kind of new chapter us working together. Um, there are 
a number of grants for which NCI is eligible, like um, the tobacco uh, grant or the USDA, but there are a number of grant opportunities out there that are only available through a 501c3 affiliate organization. So now that we have this great working relationship with the foundation, we can partner together to pursue those grants. Um, NCI can't apply directly, but New College Foundation can. And so I'll work with Kevin um, and his team to start pushing some of those out. We've already identified uh, at least one. Eastman has a grant program that we're going to pursue, and there are others that we're looking at. And that's all I had, unless you have questions for me. Anyone have any questions? Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Um, I just got a text from Brian Pace. Um, he got kicked off the Zoom somehow, so he's trying to get back in. Um, if we want to go ahead to his slide, I'll get started. And are you back in, Brian? If you want to go to the next slide. Okay, I'm sorry for the inconvenience here. I am Brian Pace. I am the advanced, the coordinator of advanced manufacturing at NCI. And like everyone else said, it's been an extremely uh, eventful year. Um, yes, COVID has been a pain like everyone else, but um, we haven't let that stop us. And I'm excited to uh, bring some of the information back to you of things we've been working on since uh, the first of this year. And I will give credit where credit is due. Uh, I, I will join in on the bandwagon with Karen and her, just her amazing abilities to be creative, her vision, and to be able to take that vision and make it a reality. So I thank you for that, Karen. One of the first things, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, Tayway. Okay, one more time, please. Okay, one of the first things we have, or one of the things we've been very focused on this year, and hopefully you've heard about it, is we are working to become a part of uh, GWO, which stands for Global Win Organization. Uh, we will be a trainer provider for them, and we're excited about that. We think it is very timely. Uh, I know a lot of people may say, why are we in this part of the state doing that? But I think if you look at the uh, one of the most uh, wanted jobs that is coming up and just to be able to train people to be able to come a part of that will be amazing. So we worked very hard since March. Um, one of the things that uh, GWO focuses on is uh, they actually have four different areas that they look at and that is the quality management systems and supporting processes, your equipment and your physical resources, your um, instructor qualifications, and then your training and assessment. So we started back, as I said, back in March, focusing on those things and learning how to write procedures after procedure and uh, appendices that go with that. And I, I really was able to learn a lot through that process. We've had a company uh, in Orlando, Florida that has been mentoring and helping us. And that has been uh, such a very great thing for us to have. Um, of course, one of the things I wish I could have done, but with COVID, we haven't been able to travel. So it's, everything's been virtual and trying to work through that, but they have been very good. Uh, as you get, as we talk about GW training, GWO training is basically two different types of training. One is a basic safety training, and there are different modules that are part of that. One is working at heights. Another part is first aid, and then you have manual handling, and then you have fire awareness. All right, if you'd hit the slide, you see here in this picture, that is our climbing tower. I'm extremely proud. I wish you could be here to see that and actually uh, look at it and see how massive it is. But um, again, not being able to travel and see what some of these other towers look like other than having pictures, we kind of had to take advice from uh, different people and design that ourselves. And we did. We decided not to go outside and try to get someone to build that. We did that in-house. And I think we have done an excellent job with that. I want to thank Trevor Martin, who is one of my, who works with me and for all of his hard work on that. And so you have the basic safety training. And then the other part, if you click away, is our basic technical training. And that involves mechanical, electrical, and hydraulic. 
and we also will have electrical tables or cabinets that we are having built and i'm proud to say that we're able to get that for a local company through the state contract so we work hard i think we've lost you brian, I'm, so, brian. I'm sorry i'm back now can you hear me yes brian okay. i'm sorry i'm not sure where you lost me at i'm sorry Sorry. It's always tough when you're talking about technology and then technology fails. I know. It's crazy. It's been perfectly fine until it came my turn. So, and I promise you, I'm not touching anything. But uh, anyway, did you hear most everything on the basic safety and training end with the towers? Yeah, yeah. we did. Okay. Brian. All right. So, the as I said, on the basic, uh, basic technical training, it, it goes into three different areas, mechanical, electrical, and hydraulic. And as I said, we have electrical cabinets that have been built and they are being completed. We actually worked hard to get a local vendor uh, through the state to get that contract. I was happy about that. We also have hydraulic training units coming in. So not only will that be something we can use in GWO training, but it'll be something we can do individual classes on in, in those particular areas. So I'm excited about seeing that come to uh, fruition also. <laughs> So we have spent a lot of time in purchasing equipment. Uh, it's been very unique. Uh, it's been a big learning curve for me, but I'm excited to tell you, I know so much more about the WIN organization now than what I did back in March. And it's, it's really been a good process. And so to bring you up to current time, we actually two weeks ago finished an internal audit. Um, that was an exciting week for us. Uh, one of the things that I want to uh, share with you is the people that we brought in to do our internal audit were very good. They're also the people that helped us throughout the last couple of months, but they were overwhelmed by what we had in our facility, not only with the tower and what we have built, but just the facility in general. Uh, we had people taking pictures of things that they would like to get back at their facility. And so it was, it was really nice to be able to see that. But uh, we went to that audit. It was actually November the 10th through the 12th. And we also were able to do a mock training during that time. So we did one day of mock training on the basic safety training and then another day on the basic technical training. And that was great because we were able to bring some people in from out of town to do that, uh, some connections that we had made. And they were overwhelmed with what we had to offer. And so I was really tickled to hear that. The trainers that came are certified trainers. And so... Uh, they were also very impressed with what we had, but gave us a lot of good feedback on things that we could do. And so um, uh, in the process of doing that now, our, our audit turned out, it was just five minor things that they want us to work on. And so we were finishing that up. And, and what we're really excited about is our external audit will start in the 1st of January. Like we have it in two stages. January 4th and 5th will be our initial review where they'll just come in and take a basic look and then uh, get back with us on some things that they would like to see us do. And then they will come back the week of January the 25th through the 28th. And that, that will be our actual audit to obtain our certification to become a GWO trainer. Um, so I think that's gonna be a good week. That also will be a week where we'll have certified trainers here and we will have people, I'm thinking possibly from all over the country that are here training that week. I'm excited to see that. Uh, I'm very grateful for uh, the different entities here at NCI that are helping us to advertise this, to get the word out and working hard to do that. Actually, we have someone coming in to do a video for us Thursday of this week. And so uh, we think this is going to be something where we can not just, obviously, we hope to be a regional trainer, but uh, nationwide. So we're excited about that. And so after our certificate, after our uh, stage two of our audit. Uh, our hope will be, and I feel very confident on this, that our certification will be issued around the 1st of, Jan of February in 2021. And then our training classes from that point will be scheduled at least one a month for the remainder of the year, probably two. And I meant to tell you, each one of these training courses takes a week. So the safety training is an entire week. Also, the basic technical is training. So if they wanted to take both, they could, but they can't take them both in the same week unless they have been somewhere else and they've had some training uh, and just took, took part of the classes. We could come in and fill in for that. So as you can tell, I'm excited about that and I'm really looking forward to that coming to fruition. I right, tell you, if you'd hit the next one. 
The other thing you may have seen on uh, October the 14th, uh, Governor, Governor Northam announced a the Mid-Atlantic Wind Train Alliance. Hopefully you saw that, we're excited about that also. And that alliance includes obviously NCI and we will be the host institution. If you go ahead and click there. And then we're joining forces with Centura College, which has three campuses located in Central and Eastern Virginia. And then the Mid-Atlantic Maritime Academy, uh, which affectionately is known as MAMA, which is located in Norfolk. And our alliance will be to provide courses, obviously certified by GWO, that will be a main focus here, and courses uh, through the National Center for Construction, Education and Research. And they have a wind technician training. So we will be able to apply onshore and offshore wind projects to Virginia and the Mid-Atlantic or training to those particular people in the Mid-Atlantic area also. Another advantage of that, we'll, we'll be able to, NCI will be able to bring courses from Centura and MAMA back here. Uh, we will have their professors coming in and their instructors come in to provide classes that we may not have uh, access to here. So we're excited about that partnership as we go along. Okay, if you go next, to the next slide, please. I just want to tell you about a couple of other things going on, a lot of things going on, but two of the things uh, I would like to make you aware of is also our metrology lab. We think we have probably one of the most unique uh, and also one of the most advanced metrology labs, especially in the state of Virginia and possibly further. We've been able to work with GoTech, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, our local organization uh, with a grant, and we are updating that lab. So it will definitely be the most updated lab in the state of Virginia. We will begin offering a course to the public. I believe that will be ready by February. Everything will be installed. And we're also working with GoTech to be able to off of this uh, to bring uh, school students, uh, middle and high school students in, have them come in on a day, day obviously when we can bring students back in and have them see what we have and take them through the process. And actually, especially in the high school, we'll be able to offer some classes there also. And last but not least, uh, we'll continue to offer our CNC programs. Uh, before COVID kind of set in, we had just started a uh, some short courses one of the things we spend a lot of time with is going to local industries and saying, what is it that you need? And they all to a source told us that they needed employees that could go in and take some short courses, not be taken off the job a lot and be able to go through those and come back to their organization and have a basic uh, learning of machines, do some hands-on things, and then be able to them to be able to put them in position there at their organization. So we offered a CNC beginners operated course back uh, the end of last year and it went extremely well. And what we did was offered that for four weeks, three evenings a week. So they didn't have to come off of the job. They would come in the evenings. And I was pleased that, that a lot of these young men traveled miles to get here and um, they, they were very excited. And now we're gonna offer that again. Also, uh, the ones who finished this one wanted us to do an advanced course. So we're looking at putting that together too, to hopefully be able to offer that by March. So I've done a lot of talking, didn't mean to, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. But again, very excited about what's going on in our center and looking forward to, to what the future holds. Do we have any questions for Brian? Um, I just want to add, just for context, um, if you're not familiar with GWO, that is an international standards body. They're based in, I believe, Germany or the Netherlands. Yes. They are the standards body for wind training internationally. So when NCI completes our audit, we get our certification, we will actually be listed on the international site. Given the CVALS project and everything that's going on offshore um, in Virginia, as well as some of the land-based wind opportunities that are being developed, um, NCI will be the first in the mid-Atlantic to offer GWO training. There's a little bit of work being done in North Carolina, some up in the Northeast, we will be the first certified location in Virginia and we will be serving the mid-Atlantic with a capability that we've never had before. As Brian mentioned, by having the certification and those two training courses that we're offering are required by everybody that's gonna work on a turbine. Um, and for the legislators that are on the call, um, we heard yesterday, anyway, we heard, I guess, one day last week 
um, from someone who's participating with the GWO that they are actually looking at making GWO certification um, a re requirement. Um, they're trying to get to in the industry to do it, but it might be interesting to see if we couldn't get some GWO requirements into some of the Clean Energy Act or CVALs related DMME kind of conversation so that um, it might help push a little bit of business our way. Um, that could be a small hint. Um, so with that, um, you know, when Brian talks about all of the, all of the things that we're doing in the lab, the one thing that we haven't had on here and we'll be able to show it to you at the next board meeting is um, as sophisticated as we think everything is, is we still have um, folks that still suffer with being able to do basic math. Um, and so for the past six or seven months, at least, we've been working with some industry members to get some background and some information, as well as working with a company out of, if they're actually out of Texas and their production studios are in California, um, to do basic math modules that will help those who want to go to work in a manufacturing setting or really just need to bone up their math skills, um, they'll be able to come in and virtually do some training around basic math. We've heard that that's a massive problem for the manufacturing fields, for a lot of the trades programs that people want to get into, they simply can't pass basic math. So we're going to start offering a basic math um, course virtually. I think it's not eight or nine modules that they'll be able to take that are increasingly advanced. Um, wow but it's how to read a ruler, how to convert fractions to decimals and back and forth. And, and a lot of things that we, I think, take for granted that, they're, that people are learning throughout their schooling and through the careers that they simply aren't. So um, if anybody wants a primer on how hard it is to get through GWO, let Brian know, he will happily tell you just how hard that's been. Um, it, it, it's been a lot of fun. And, and I just heard from back from uh, Corey, on the math and they're doing the last three modules they're filming them this week so hopefully we'll have something within two weeks there great thanks brian and thank you so one of our other go ahead to the next slide Tayway, please um one of our other flagship programs we've been running is the amazon restart program um we have chris mcdonald and um i'm not sure who else is going to be presenting other than chris um but i will tell you this has been one of the most challenging initiatives that i've ever worked on um, when Senator Stanley and I were approached about, you know, bringing AWS to NCI, I thought this is ideal because we will be crushed with people that want to take this. Um, and what this is, is it's cloud-based training. It, it helps people be, become prepared to sit for the cloud practitioner exam. That is one of the hottest career certifications on the planet right now, um, not in Southern Virginia, Will this figure apply directly? But generally it's it's for an, a starting help desk person, a starting um, you know database person. But as much as we all use Amazon, we all know Amazon, these jobs are plentiful and they usually run about 130 in terms of a starting salary in Northern Virginia and otherwise. We made a commitment um, and we received tobacco commission funding for this was to provide First of all, training to people in the Tobacco Commission footprint, Southern and Southwestern Virginia, um, but then to take it out in concentric circles. So we would then try to find people that were within the Lynchburg footprint and we would go on across the state. Um, I can tell you that I have never had a harder time getting people to want to take a program than I have with this. Um, it's a 12 week, eight to five program um, Chris will tell you a little bit more about what's, what it entails. Um, but at the end of it, you get a free practice exam, you get free certification exam, and through the process, you actually get help finding a position. So that could be a remote position, that could be an in-person position. Um, we've struggled getting people in the Tobacco Commission footprint to take this course. Um, recent numbers, um, Amazon did a it was a blog post and then CNBC picked up the blog. We have over 300 people nationally that wanna be part of this program. When you whittle it all down, we had about, and Chris will give you the updated numbers, but we have about 10 out of the entire Tobacco Commission footprint um, that will be part, and it, those numbers hopefully have gone up a little bit. We've been doing a lot of target marketing, um, but it's been a struggle. Um, 
we feel like, I mean, we wrap around these students, we make sure they're successful. We have one cohort that's finishing next week. Um, but it's been a true, it's been a true challenge, um, despite all of our best efforts to to really pull out the people that have that are in the footprint. And I think it's truly a testament to the fact that these types of jobs aren't the kind of jobs that people see their parents, their neighbors, and others working in. And so we're not only trying to cultivate students just for the program, we're actually trying to cultivate the entry and the and the normalization of a new industry in, in remote work and in jobs that don't look like manufacturing and other types of his, historically prevalent jobs in Southern and Southwestern Virginia. A lot of great partners. Um, Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I, I think I took the hard part in saying that this has been difficult and we yes. haven't done as well with people in the footprint as we've, we have hoped, but we've, we've had a good program anyway. Chris, all you. All right, great, great, great. Well, my name is Christopher McDonald. I am the coordinator of student engagement here at NCI. Um, if you would, could you go to the next slide, Tayway? All right. So, um, you know, Karen gave you an overview of what the AWS program is. Um, currently, uh, for the it's, there's four cohorts from 25 to 30 learners. It's a 12 week uh, virtual free hands on uh, program. Um, can we go ahead to the next slide? She already covered most of that. I don't want to take away from her great words. All right, so this current Chris? cohort. Yes, ma'am. Chris, ma sorry, it's Karen. Back up to the other slide a second. I want to make sure people see one thing. Okay. Did you see the highlighted piece there? Martinsville, that Virginia. That was part of the CNBC. CNC, this was a CNBC blog that was picked up. Look at the areas that are located where these restart cohorts are located. New York, Newark, New Jersey, Martinsville, Virginia, San Jose, California, and San Francisco. That's pretty doggone good company to be keeping. Sorry, Chris, didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to make sure that got pointed out. No, 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 that, that's, that's also great. I was actually on the phone this morning with uh, two people, one from Oregon and one from California, trying to get into Martinsville program here with AWS. So that's a great thing. We're getting, uh, we're getting recognition nationally. All right, you can go ahead, uh, Taylor. All right, so this current cohort, we have about 10 students that are in the program right now. Um, out of those 10 students, um, they are really enjoying the program. And some of them actually wanna take the program again um, because they're having so much fun and they're learning so much. Um, nine out of 10 were interviewed by a potential employer and six were called back for a second interview. So that's really great. We're, we're approaching 100% job placement rate, which is really good, especially with this being the first cohort in this AWS program. Um, Amazon actually came in and sponsored mock uh, interview training, uh, which was a success as well. And they had a professional Q&A session to help get students, those students ready for the real world as far as interviewing with different employers after this program ends, uh, I think the end of this week or either early next week. All right. Second program starting. Yes, yes, ma'am. All right. How does a student get in and can a student have a full time job and still do this program? So with, with this program being uh, basically a nine to five, it would be very difficult for them to actually work a full time job and uh, do this program. Um, we haven't had one person to go through it yet that had a full time job, um, but who knows to where we may see success in this program. Um, they may be able to do that uh, later on as we continue to move forward. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, next slide, please. All right, with this second cohort, uh, well, as you see, the future cohorts are listed. Uh, graduation for this first cohort is December the 7th. Uh, this next cohort, I'm very, very, very excited about. Uh, we have over 400 applications, and this is all over the U.S., uh, that our people are trying to get into uh, this Martinsville NCI program. Um, as I said before, I've been on, on the phone with, with just different people from all over begging to get into this program. Right now, we have over 100 Virginia applications, and those students, we're looking at starting a program next week. So currently, right now, we're actually going through the interview process, part of the acceptance uh, into the program. Um, and we're very, very, very excited about, you know, potentially uh, having our largest uh, cohort to date in this program. 
Um, our next, uh, after de December the 9th, uh, we're steady going to be pushing marketing uh, and, and trying to get the word out for the third cohort, which starts March the 12th, 2021, as well as the fourth cohort, which is in June 8th, 2021. Um, and like I said, this is a 12-week uh, rigorous program. Um, and these students, I'm very, very, very proud of the students that are in the program now. Um, that are approaching graduation because they're a family and they've grown together and uh, they struggled together and grown together and they've had a great instructor with the AWS Restart program. All right, next slide. Oh, okay. Um, is there, do you guys have any questions about the AWS program? Yeah. So sorry, Kevin. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, just the criteria that you use for saying how you decide who gets in, who doesn't get in. And the second from that is not only providing the training, but is there a, a, a desire for a, to try to get these students to, to live here and work uh, remotely? Is that part of the plan? Yes, uh, to answer the second question first, uh, yes, it is a desire for those uh, those students to actually get jobs in the area. Um, we have a team that's working local with uh, different <laughs> organizations and businesses that are around the Martinsville, Henry County area, as well as the Pennsylvania County and uh, Roanoke region, Southside Virginia, just trying to get those students to stay in the area as, as well. But there's not a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, IT uh, in this area, just with it being so rural. Um, but we are pushing for them to stay in the area uh, with that. So great question. Now, also with the assessment, we do have an assessment exam that these students are taking to get into the program. Uh, we're looking at everything across the board um, and, and just with those scores and with those uh, with the criteria for that, we are in the mix with uh, our Amazon uh, professor. And he's helped interviewing the students as well, because we want to make sure that we want to get everybody a chance to get into the program. Uh, but, you know, you have to have some kind of uh, we will hope that you will have some kind of knowledge about the IT, uh, the databases and, uh, and all those things to get into the program. So, Kevin, just to just to follow up on that a little bit, um, our our commitment to the Tobacco Commission was that we were going to get. First, either remote or in region jobs for the people that completed. So we would either find them a job that could be work remotely from the region, or we would find a job in the region for them to interview for. We don't guarantee them a job. We just guarantee them the chance to interview for the, for the job. Um, we have not had a whole lot of success with employers in the region um, you know, participating in this. So our primary focus has been on remote work so that the people will not need to leave the region in order to have a gainful career. And you know, in the cloud, um, we worked with um, Kathleen, uh, Delegate Murphy. Some of these names will be familiar to you. Um, Telos out of Northern Virginia um, could use a little bit of help. Delegate Murphy cracking the nut with NVTC. Have had some conversation with Troy Murphy there about having additional companies participate with us, but would love to have them participating. Um, but this the. Zero sum game is we don't want people to have to move to take these jobs. Um, and so we're very explicit with those that participate that we will do the best we can to find them a job. We will do the best we can to find them a remote job. If they choose to leave, of course, then that's entirely up to them. We can't dictate what they do or don't do. Um, in terms of criteria, the only written, written criteria other than the assessments that Chris mentioned is you have to have a GED or a high school diploma. Other than that, there's no IT background required. And I have to take my hat off to the staff, Taywei Lee, Janet Copenhaver, Steve, Chris, Dunyeski, who's our instructor. These guys have been underpinning a lot of these students to make sure that they get through it. We're loaning out laptops if they have problems with that. We now have UVA Wise offering two locations in Southwestern Virginia for students to actually go and sit. If they don't have good enough broadband, we're offering the same at NCI. So we're doing everything we can to really make this a, I'm gonna say a foolproof process. I can't say it's foolproof because you can't control everything, um, but we're doing the best we can to get them in. And, and once we get them in, we're doing the best we can to get them through. 
So, um, you know, kudos to everybody. If anybody, did I hit everything, Kevin? I guess I did. Um, yep. AWS is very prescriptive. We have weekly calls with them. This is an international program. And so um, we're doing our best. We're their first rural deployment. So they're learning from us just like we're learning from them. So anybody else have any questions about Amazon? Okay. Um, at this point, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to take a little bit of an audible and I'm going to ask um, Tayway, can we go down to the Deloitte Claude Moore healthcare presentation? Um, Dr. Hazel's on the line and he has a hard stop at three. So I want to make sure we get him in and then um, we will go back. Steve and Janet, we'll, we'll come back to the app, we'll have their chance. Hey, wait, can you put up Dr. Hazel's presentation I sent you, please? There it is. Thank you, uh, Karen. Has Karen, has the group been briefed at all on my presentation. Uh, no, sir. Okay. We were gonna leave it to you. Very good. Then I'll, I'll start at the beginning. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Hazel. For those who don't know, I was um, Secretary of Health and Human Resources uh, for eight years and uh, spent a couple at George Mason. And now I'm at the uh, Claude Moore Charitable Foundation. And the Charitable Foundation has had a program that dates back to uh, 2007 that was designed to bring kids, generally early high school kids, into healthcare careers. And we're thinking in terms of not necessarily doctors and nurses, but x-ray techs and pharmacy techs and nursing assistants and so forth as we move along. Next slide, please. The, uh, the program has grown. The green areas on this map show where we are, and um, we are looking forward to a, a program perhaps with NCI in, the, uh, in your region here in the near future. The, um, as I came into the foundation in April of this year, the desire here is to see if we could make this statewide. And so we began by taking a look at the program itself, uh, some evaluation of where the needs are. And uh, there are quite a few. If we brought Deloitte in and we began a planning process that literally was a cast of over 100. And it included a good program that we did with uh, NCI and folks in your region around October 22nd. Um, next slide, please. The model that we have used historically is, an, is a partnership engagement where we have worked with the public school systems in a region, with uh, health employers, uh, generally hospitals in a region, and also community colleges. And the, the idea has been to get the kids interested in the career, let them know it exists. Many families don't provide support, even some mentorship, because you can show a kid and their parents that a career is there, but it's still a long way from where they are to actually being there. We have provided support to school systems to uh, be able to do the uh, education and training. We've tried to organize uh, experiential learning. And the goal is when a kid finishes high school, they've got a ticket, a certificate to work in a field or to go on into higher education, hopefully with the support of their employer. And we've learned a lot in this process, which is what we'll share with you. Next slide. Uh, one of the ideas that we know is that we need to think in terms of health science and healthcare education as career pathways. When you sit down with a, a young person and their parents and say, boy, we can train you to be a nurse assistant, doesn't necessarily inspire one to go into nursing. Um, you need to be able to see a career and to build on your credentials. So if you start thinking about this way, this is an example of um, that was done for the Northern Virginia Community College, but thinking about going from certificates and licensing on through the various 
levels of, of training so that you have careers. And to do that, you need uh, credits that transfer, you need stackable credentials in the fields, which changes uh, some of the issues related to professional regulation that, that we deal with. And I think the senators, um, delegates on the call might say, gee, this is kind of like the tech talent pipeline, but for health workers. And that's what we have been working to develop. Next slide. In fact, our proposed solution, we're calling a health sciences highway, early engagement, ensuring that the foundational sciences are, are available to kids. Uh, Karen mentioned earlier that there's a surprising lack of uh, math uh, capacity in many students. One of the big barriers we've heard of moving from um, a technical degree uh, to a uh, professional degree, say at health professions, is lack of um, basic science, um, biology, and chemistry. Uh, real problems. Uh, when we funded in Petersburg last year, uh, they got delayed because it turns out they didn't have a functioning science lab and that we ended up letting them use their funding, uh, $250,000 to equip a lab. We don't do buildings, but our goal has historically been to get kids in, get them moving through the pipeline. And um, we have found the barriers which need to be eliminated going forward. So think about how you make this seamless high school, community college on and off ramps for career. You might even think of ramps now for people who want to reskill or upskill um, as a result of COVID. Uh, and why it was so interesting to talk to Karen and the NCI folks about it is because you know, we have historically stopped at the community college. So how do you get from there to the four-year degree? It's one thing to be a nursing assistant or an LPN but you know, or an RN, but how do you get the BSN and maybe beyond that if you want? So those are places to think about that uh, we haven't thought about historically. Next slide, please. The need for health workers is, is critical. Um, you can see some numbers here regarding national statistics, aging populations, more complicated um, health conditions. It's not just the long-term services and supports that are needed. Uh, we see um, in Virginia a predicted uh, growth uh, as well that is required. And I can go to very, some very specific numbers for you. Next slide, please. Uh, George Mason uh, has done some work for us on looking at health workforce. And the next slide will show a map of your tobacco, um, south side tobacco footprint. This will give you the Look, we'll tell you what I'm about to reference in the next slide, which is a 10 year projections on um, occupational uh, supply and demand for your footprint. And if you look at the demand side, you see significant needs across the region. Um, and you see the enrollments that are in uh, career and technical education programs are really pretty limited. So we need to think about how we get people into those, get them attracted because we need the people. We, we just plain don't have enough. Uh, it, it's as simple as that. Uh, next slide, please. So how do you build a, a highway? Uh, we've worked uh, with the uh, Governor's Health Workforce Advisory Committee, uh, the uh, Senate Bill 952 Commission uh, and others Clearly, there needs to be some state engagement, uh, investment, if you will, uh, in the, in the uh, funding. We need to think about how we govern where the funding goes. The Virginia Health Workforce Development Authority exists through the Area Health Education Consortium. We think that that could be updated. Uh, the board could be strengthened specific, specific, uh, considerably and they could be given some very specific tasks to do. Um, there does need to be some some data that supports this. And, and I can tell you that Claude Moore is working to support that now. A huge problem is related to the cost of dual enrollment. The kid can go to high school for free, but the dual enrollment costs around the state vary. So it's essential that we think about some strategy to allow the G3 funds to pay and to work through this. And we need to think about how the state supports um, 
supports the work. Another, another issue simply is that there are not enough teachers. I know this has happened in the tech talent pipeline where professionals who know what the profession requires are unable to teach in high school for one reason or another. They may not have the teaching credentials. Um, you know, generally, if you can, let's say you can be employed as an x-ray tech or a nuclear medicine tech or an ultrasound tech, you're probably going to work for the hospital and not the school system or the community college. So these training a larger pool of people and finding a way to leverage the folks you have through broadcast teaching and so forth will be necessary to make this work. The next slide, please. Say so if we could get to the next slide. Um, the the uh, recommendations um, specifically, uh, we support the um, governor or the governor's workforce advisory committee recommendation of a, of a fund that creates incentives for private sector investment and match. I think I've been through most of these. I would point out, um, uh, not just because Senator Hanger's on the phone, but um, we, we are working with the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Services to see if we could create a behavioral health provider certification and uh, get the experiential learning in the state system. And that would, something like that could work in Southside as well with our hospital down there. Um, we also recognize that there are a number of other initiatives out there that have to be coordinated and, and be complementary with. Be, otherwise, employers will be just badgered to death by different groups wanting internships and experiential learning that's, that is not at all um, aligned. Next slide. Now, here's where I think it, it NCI comes to play. For this to work, there are significant regional um, differences, obviously. And so the question is, is how do you pull a region together, form a collective impact activity? Who decides what programs you'll have? Uh, who will get the employers involved? Um, this is a situation where you need significant engagement from the private sector for the training. Uh, you need to think about um, local funding sources from employers since you're providing workforce, perhaps foundations. In your case, the Harvest Foundation is a, a might be someone, a group that would be interested. We need to think about where the bright spots are so we can share those. Um, need to think ahead to emerging fields. And that's, again, behavioral health is one with the interest that New College has in tech. Think about all the need for telehealth, telemedicine, not just for the providers, but the people who support them with the telemedicine, telehealth techniques. And we need to think about how we make this transition between um, high school, community college to four-year degrees. And again, that's an area where the uh, institutes, the higher ed institutes, I think could play a role that we could, we could model at New College. Next slide, please. Mention the complementary initiatives. Again, it's we're not working in a vacuum here. All of these are important and play a role, whether it's Health Workforce Development Authority, Virginia Ready, the uh, REV initiative of the governor to bring people back who've been displaced by COVID into uh, healthcare jobs uh, would be useful, uh, G3. So all of these play a role, and that's why we need to think about governance uh, regionally as well as statewide. So um, next slide, we did have a convening uh, that New College Institute held and Deloitte facilitated on October 22nd. And we had hospital and long-term care and community service boards and your um, uh, educational institutions, the high schools, the community college in the region. And I can tell you that, they, that there was significant interest and there, on how we could build something that would build on what's in the area, be really creative in terms of reaching out, uh, addressing uh, the economic development aspects. This is all about creating jobs that people don't have to leave home to perform, and these jobs pay well in general uh, in many places. How you start early, uh, the alignment is important, uh, and so forth. So the desired outcome of the convening I would say was to think about a collective impact activity in South in Southern Virginia, 
perhaps uh, at least catalyzed initially with Claude Moore funding and uh, New College Institute um, leadership, uh, aligning it with the state activity and really thinking about how a health workforce highway could support the economic development, better health and meaningful careers and growth quality of life uh, in a rural area. So with that, um, Madam Director, I will stop and ask questions or answer questions if there are any. Anyone have any, any questions for Bill? Um, just to add a, a, a little bit of an additional context around this, um, NCI is currently in the process with Matt Lighty's help, who you heard from earlier, um, putting together a letter of interest to go back to Claude Moore to do some funding to be able to, um, you know, help us build this out more programmatically. Um, we simply don't have the staff internally to be able to take on a major study um, that would be, be required in a planning grant and that sort of thing. So we're going to be asking Claude Moore for some help long term um, to help us get some resources to actually build this out for all of Southern Virginia. Um, the group that Bill was talking about that we met with um, came from as far east as basically Emporia, South Hill, Halifax were all in, involved and went all the way through Roanoke. So are up to and abutted up against Roanoke. So um, we're talking about a large swath of area, but as, as Dr. Hazel said, it's um, there was a lot of interest um, and now it's on us to, to make sure that we take the ne next steps that we said we would. Actually in the board packet, or at least in the link that Chris Niblett sent out to you, there were there's a report out from the October event. There's more information on the stats and then there's information on the, the health highway as well. Any questions? Dr. Hazel, thank you so much for being Thank you. with us. I really appreciate your time and um, look forward to working with you on well, this going you. forward. Thank you, Karen. I just wanted to point out is that it is our hope that what we design here could be potentially a pilot or something that uh, the General Assembly might be interested in looking at in the year. So um, just to perk up the Senator's ears and uh, the delegates ears that are on the call that there's some things that um, we could do together that could make this really powerful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. Dr. Hazel. Appreciate it. Um, keeping with the healthcare theme for a second, Tayway, if we can go back to the telehealth slide for John Maxwell. Um, John, if you want to give us a quick overview of what you've been doing with um, Star Telehealth and the telehealth program, and then we'll come back to the um, we'll come back to the academic side. Okay. It has been a, a great pleasure working with Secretary Hazel and his team. And our team now is with the Claude Moore Charitable Foundation with uh, just looking at ways that we can facilitate students and people working through NCI and with a partnership to help fund or to help fund and also create the education and pathways for, uh, for many employees that, uh, that are in our area that they could grow and to fulfill those needs that we have right here in our community. So that is an extremely exciting thing. Also in how do we relate not only working face to face still, but also being able to work in telehealth uh, positions as well. And Tayway, if you could move to the next slide. Uh, in working with the telehealth, you know, COVID has been a devastating thing for many people around the world. And telehealth continues to grow as uh, providers and uh, patients have seen the benefits of being able to get their health care and to provide health care uh, in a way where it's safe and where uh, People, patients can be at home, providers can be in their clinics or at home as well. And so NCI continues to develop uh, programs and education to where we can provide certifications with partnerships uh, around the nation and really uh, internationally, as in we're now in seven foreign countries as well. 
And so from January 1 to October 31 of this year, I am excited to say that uh, we had over close to 4,000 different certificates with the New College Institute uh, name uh, being provided and education being provided in all 50 states and in seven foreign countries. 406 of those certificates were awarded right here in Virginia, uh, several of them here in Ridgeway, uh, right here around Martinsville as well. And so it has, it continues to grow. Uh, we also have seven universities around the nation right now that are working to build our coursework into their curriculum. Uh, just as, just a few minutes ago as Chris was speaking, I was uh, emailing with, uh, with Baylor University and they are starting to, uh, to build our curriculum or our courses into their curriculum as well. And so it's, uh, you never know where the phone call is gonna come from or where the email is gonna come from about building our curriculum and our education into uh, different universities or health systems, uh, really just uh, around the nation. During this time with being uh, since COVID, We've done about 170 different Zoom presentations, including with, with New College Institute and Star Telehealth, uh, which has reached about approximately 85,000 people uh, for all of those presentations. Many of those presentations are not only talking about telehealth, but also educating uh, people about New College Institute and how we, how we operate, how we, uh, the coursework that we can provide, and also in people gaining interest in New College Institute uh, through our courses with Star Telehealth. I've also done six radio shows, which were very interesting. I've never done a radio show before until the last <clears throat> few months. And we've been able to do six different radio shows right now talking about New College Institute and Star Telehealth and how we operate right here in the Commonwealth of Virginia and we've been able to, to have those broadcasts across all time zones in the United States, including Hawaii, which uh, is a time zone uh, all into itself, which uh, usually my communications with them are about nine or 10 o'clock at night as, uh, as, as they are, are winding up uh, their regular work day in, in that time zone. So it's been an interesting time. It's been a growth time for NCI and for Star Telehealth. And as we continue to develop new modules and new education and have new partners, uh, our name recognition and our education modules will only uh, continue to grow. And it's, uh, it's exciting uh, to be a part of all this and especially with Dr. Hazel and all that we've done with his team, uh, really in growing and pulling the entire NCI around the state and around the Commonwealth together to show what all the things are that NCI is doing. And it's been, an, it's been a, a proud to be a part of, of both organizations now as we're coming together as one. So thank you again, Dr. Hazel. Thank you, John. Karen, anything Karen, else? Anybody that, uh, have any questions for John or Dr. Hazel? No, I mean, you guys have done a great amount of work and, and obviously this has been a big unexpected blessing made out of a curse. So um, going three times. All right, thank you guys. Thank Steve you. Peter. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Hope okay, you can thank you. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Um, I'm going to start off by just talking about our degree programs. Uh, currently, um, I'm going to get hats off to Longwood University. They were our only partner that was able to stay face to face in our building. Hats off to our staff and Karen. We worked uh, to make sure that everything was um, uh, CDC guidelines were followed and we spaced them apart. Uh, they do have 10, 10 students that will be graduating in December and we've already gotten calls uh, as well as Dr. Randall. 
uh, about students need, you know, schools needing jobs for these students. So um, that's great. Uh, we have 28 students in a Longwood education program and not in the social work program. And hats off to Dr. Randall and Janie Brazier for hanging in there. They were face to face. Um, our Virginia Tech doctoral program uh, continues to go well. They are scheduled to complete that degree next August. Um, there are 11 students that remain in that program and on track. I want to thank Kevin um, uh, with the foundation. Um, I had several calls, Karen, I had several calls with him. And uh, before we were only able to give scholarships to bachelor's and master's students, but uh, Kevin worked with his board and we did get to have several students. I think it was three that did receive scholarships uh, from, from our foundation. I think in total, we had 25 educational students that received scholarships. And I believe the amount was $44,500. So we're thankful for that. We appreciate it again, Kevin, for working with us. Um, since our last call, we were able to get the Bluefield Masters of Counselor Education going. Uh, we have four students in that program. Um, and I think one of those students also received scholarship um, that applied. So that program's off the ground. I'm glad to see it. Um, also, we are in conversation with Radford University uh, for a master's program in strategic communications. Uh, this person would be obviously very versed in communications through social media and different forms of communication. They would work in either education, healthcare, in any way where information needed to get out to the public. Um, the different higher ed centers are, they've asked the different higher ed centers to promote that particular program. Um, William and Mary is scheduled to start an MBA program, a cohort MBA program, the spring of 2021. Um, uh, the University of Virginia uh, also is scheduled for the ne a next cohort to start fall 2021. This would be a bachelor's degree in BIS, which is Bachelor's Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, so we're looking for fall 21. Hopefully we can get students in that program. Um, there are roughly 225 BI BIS students across the nation. So again, this is an online program. Um, we've also been in conversation with uh, Dr. Roger Collins with James Madison University with their Master's of Education program. They're looking at a new virtual way of, of having this particular program and Karen and I are scheduled to have a call with him on Thursday. Uh, I've had several conversations with him on that particular program. Um, in terms of outreach activities, um, we, since our last call, we had scheduled to do um, some summer type related programs. We did a pop-up summer camp drive-through with K through 10 students. We had 250 students um, in that particular program come through. They all received STEM related activities. We also were successful in our Cyber Patriot Camp. Um, I wanna say hats off to Janet Copenhagen and Tay Wei Lee. They both were the instructors in that program. Uh, we had to move that to a virtual method, which was not easy but we were able to do that, uh, worked out really well. In fact, in a national competition, one of our students, uh, again, that was instructed by J Janet and Tayway, uh, finished in the top 10 of the national competition and we had two in the top 25. Um, we continue to do our Reading for Life program. We have already delivered books uh, to Martinsville Henry County. We also serve Patrick County Every kindergarten student in those three uh, school systems receives a book. Generally, we go out and read to these students. Um, we're not able to do that, but we, what we're doing is we're working with Longwood University and their teacher education program, and they're creating virtual links um, to be sent to the schools. Um, Lastly, uh, we have partnered with VISTI. VISTI is the Virginia Society for Technology and Education. Um, again, Janet Copenhagen, who is part, works part-time with us. Uh, she was the former director of technology for Henry County Schools, helped us make this contact. We were scheduled to have a face-to-face -face conference with them on October 8th. 
Uh, they always draw a nice crowd because they, they provide certificate and endorsement programs for teachers. Um, but they did uh, actually do that particular program virtually and it was success. We had 85 people attend that. So that's it for uh, degree programs and um, outreach activities. Any questions? All right, thanks, Steve. I do want to note that um, Ms. Hodges had has made an intro to us for us to NCANT, and so we're pursuing potentially a relationship with them as well. Um, we're also in conversations with Averitt and a few others, so we hope to be bringing on some more um, of the more traditional academic opportunities as well. Steve and his team and Chris and Janet and Tewe and everybody, the, these outreach programs and these students are, are a labor of love. And these guys um, spend copious amounts of time making sure they're successful, making sure that we reach out, that the faculty feels well cared for and well taken care of and so really appreciate everything that they do. Any, any questions going once, going twice, going three times? Um, Mr. Chairman, we're, we're going to pick up the pace here a little bit. I know we've been throwing a lot at you, but there's been a lot going on. Um, Steve, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, so earlier you heard mention of $1.5 million that we received in CARES funding for a technology upgrade. Um, I reached out to, um, through my network, and Mark House has been um, a contractor. Um, he's now an NCI family member. We're trying to adopt him, but I haven't been successful yet. Um, who has been working along with John Hogue from um, Averitt University and Michael Palmer, who was a former NCIer and Tayway and Rebecca Hurst and whole copious amount of people to um, tee up our ability to be able to spend the CARES money, A, by December 31st, which is no small feat, but also B, take NCI to the cutting edge of technology. Um, you know, we don't wanna be so far out on a limb that we're bleeding, but um, we wanted the shelf life of technology is about six months to a year if we're that if we're lucky, and so we're trying to position NCI to be some be in a position where we're able to upgrade easily, we're able to be future proof in some aspects, um, and to put in equipment and software and programs and apps and everything that will serve us far into the future, rather than just upgrading one piece and getting hardware that doesn't work with so, doesn't work with software and vice versa. Mark and John and, and Michael and Tayway and, and Rebecca are all working together to make sure that we have a technology infrastructure that not only works, but it's also efficient, effective, cuts down duplicative work um, and is something that is, is truly workable for, from the staff perspective. Mark, are you on, you and Michael? You bet. I think you basically gave yes, the pitch. Yes. So we can go, we go to the next slide. Um, what we've been trying to do, as you've been watching, there's been a lot of stuff going on and we're trying to make sure that the technology infrastructure is set up so we can always say yes to all the other things that are happening. So we've only got two slides and Michael is gonna talk first about an, a technology refresh program that's using the CARES funding. And then John and I will spend a few moments on the future. So Michael, you wanna just get them up to date on where we're at? Sure, sure. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, uh, Director Jackson, uh, Senator Stanley, to the board. Thank you. It's an honor and pleasure to be working with you guys once again. So we'll make this uh, as brief as possible. Like you said, you know, when you're looking at the refresh program, you know, like Karen already said, your technology is already off the shelf six months a year behind. So just making sure that we have uh, a good refresh plan three to five years refresh plan. You know, we were blessed enough to get the 1.5 CARES Act money. Um, so what we're looking at, the, the critical path is to upgrade the, the AV equipment that's within the classrooms to address some of those pain points. And that's updating the audio visual cameras that when a teacher is, is presenting or teaching, uh, the, the individual can see them, they can see uh, the class. Um, you know, we're looking to also Zoom and WebEx. Also just looking at those. So we said those two because those are, you know, user-friendly, you know, cloud-based. Uh, 
scalable. So if we needed to upgrade something in the next year or something like that, it'll be easier to do. And then also you can see the Wi-Fi. That was another thing. Um, all these parts, all these components are very critical to the critical path that we're trying to upgrade the classrooms. And, and, and the, the phase that we're going to take it by is you are going to look at the classrooms first, upgrade the audio visual technology. Then from there, look at the lecture hall that we have, and then our boardrooms and also the collaboration room um, uh, that's up at the old governor space building. Um, like I said, using cloud-based infrastructure, what that'll do is help us reduce a hardware footprint in the actual, in the Baldwin building. Uh, one of our pain points that we had before that we purchased a uh, Polycom infrastructure, you know, one of those things that you, that takes care of that, you know, the hardware is already expired. You have, it costs a lot more to upgrade and replace it. And you have a lot of challenges and going back to that intuitiveness, not only for being user-friendly for our staff, that, but also user friendly for our IT department, something that's easily that could be upgraded, something that easily that can be managed by our IT department. Uh, also, you know, looking at the security cameras, monitoring, um, something that's going to give us disaster recovery, high availability. If something happens with the building, you know, with cloud based infrastructure, we'll still be able to broadcast a class. We'll be able to do that. Also, finally, uh, pursuing multiple vendors to ensure uh, completed by December 31st. We know that is a very aggressive timeline. Uh, we feel confident that we've reached out to a few vendors that can help us meet that meet that timeline of December 31st. And then ultimately like John, and he's um, gonna talk on the next slide. We wanna make sure that all this technology integrates with all our different partners. Uh, you heard so many wonderful things about the programs that we are doing now that's coming in the future. Uh, also, from a day-to-day -day operational standpoint, our uh, student information systems, uh, classroom management systems, just making sure that the, the that the AV equipment integrates with that. So, with that said, any questions from anyone? Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Thank you. So again, we've been, uh, what we were supposed to be doing, John and I kid each other, even days we're working on what we're supposed to be doing and odd days we work on the infrastructure upgrade. I went back and looked, I started working on the 22nd of October and it feels like I've been uh, working there for months. Uh, but John's gonna just walk you through what we're doing from a future infrastructure IT roadmap perspective. So John. It's John there. Thanks, thanks Mark. Uh, just some very brief comments, and thank you all for uh, your patience and persistence with this. It's been a privilege to serve New College and the region, and of course, Karen. Uh, two tasks. Obviously, we have uh, we have a lot of asset procurement relative to refreshing the rooms, and uh, honestly, if we act promptly, then we can we can ruin the month of December for some very nice contractors. Uh, because uh, everything has moved to the cloud. Uh, I think uh, each and every one of us has Zoom fatigue. So the idea is to make learning better than the, than the Zoom solution and more effective, both to create content, uh, but also to be the endpoints for partnerships with other institutions and these interesting new relationships, uh, such as Amazon and the Wind folks. Uh, to integrate uh, immediately is, uh, I guess to, uh, to to use a metaphor, a really short runway. We have a little bit more headroom to uh, upgrade the learning management system. Uh, really uh, understanding the career tech space involves both the uh, credentialing and the outcome assessment, the integration with uh, the, the management of user IDs. And uh, you know the, the next thing out is the uh, is e-portfolios for students. So at, at this point, obviously, uh, uh, the, the flaps are down, the landing gear is down, uh, signatures away, hopefully, from a, a, a contract to procure updates to priority rooms and throughout the building, uh, and then a, a little bit uh, longer runway for uh, uh, scaling up and scaling out the institution to uh, 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 first recognize really the excellent solution in place and then how, at, as it has handled thousands of students in the telehealth uh, credentialing. 
but also to look at on the, on the laundry list of requirements uh, on your slide before you, uh, you know, the uh, scale up and scale out uh, might resemble more of what a two year and four year or a big K-12 organization might look like using platforms like Canvas or Blackboard um, as we look through that and also anticipating requirements from these new folks such as smart cities. Uh, Mark, to you. Yeah, so that's just a quick overview. Um, again, I think the other thing we've been trying to do is embrace the idea that we're not going to be perfect, particularly with a really short runway. So we're going to try and procure things that we think will be helpful in the future and then work in that direction. The other thing that um, when I've, I've taught online for 12 years, I'm used to virtual instruction and all the products themselves have pluses and minuses. And I think it's going to be the new college's benefit to make sure we can support whatever it is the universities or partners that we're working with can, are using. So try to make sure our, our infrastructure adapts as quickly as we can to whatever they're using, whether it's Zoom or WebEx, Canvas or not, we can be able to integrate quickly and easily with them. So that's it. Questions? Thanks again for your time. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, John. I, I do have to say a special thank you to these guys. I mean, they came in cold. Um, John actually is an employee of Averett University and has been volunteering on this. Um, Mark, as I said, is a contractor. And then um, Michael Palmer, who used to be at NCI, but we have him under a small contracting, you know, ex set up as well. These guys, without these guys, none of this would have been possible because it is, as they said, it's almost a full, it is a full-time job and they are doing part-time, full-time work just to get us over the finish line. So when we were asked the question about the CARES money, can you spend it? I said, yes. And then looked at these three guys plus Rebecca and said, hey, guess what? You got a million and a half to spend. And they, of course, were very excited. And then I told them they only had 30 days and they all passed out. But that's good. So um, I want to thank them for their help and their, you know, their guidance because it's NCI is going to be a much better place from a technology standpoint. It it will be the cutting edge that it was when the building was first built. So thank you guys for for your time and your and your help. Um, moving on, I'm, we're I know we're running a little bit behind, so I'm going to ask these ladies to really pick up the pace and dazzle you with their greatness as quickly as possible. Um, all of the things that you've heard are a microcosm of everything that we've got going on at NCI. And as somebody said early on, you know, it's, it's not just about doing these things. It's about making sure that people know that we're doing these things. And so I'm going to turn this over to the team of Rebecca Hurst and um, to Maura Keeney, who are our marketing gurus. And I just call Rebecca by her maiden name because I've known her for so long. It's actually Rebecca Hughes. So sorry about that, Rebecca. That's a all right. That's a pass all in the right. past. Go way back. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. It's uh, it is. Can everyone hear me? Okay. My audio has been acting a little bit, a little bit wonky. You're good. All right. Thank you. Um, yep. And you can go to the next slide if you want. Um, instead of uh, I only have thirty slides. Just kidding. All right. Um, no. Um, I've got, we've got a great team. It's been a joy working with everyone at New College Institute. I have uh, just had a blast. I've only been there. I know Mark was just saying um, he's only been working a little while um, and it feels like it's been a long time. And I've only been with NCI for a little over a year and uh, feels like so much longer, but it's been uh, a joy working with everyone there. Um, and the marketing efforts, the successes we've had have been truly a team effort. Um, so you can see on this slide, a lot of the collateral we've produced, um, so the, we've launched a new website, uh, some uh, rebrand, which uh, Mara Keeney is gonna talk to you about. We've um, got a relationship with Collaborative Communications who uh, we work with. They've uh, produced our pr uh, press releases and help us out with um, some of our social media. And sh she's gonna go into some more detail, but uh, then a, just a huge help to us um, consulting and um, giving us just some great advice and helping us with um, a, a lot of areas with marketing. So she's gonna give you some um, 
she's going to chip in, talk about the rebrand and some of the media. But uh, with the new website, we wanted to launch a new site. Um, I can go into a lot of detail, but I will not. If you want more reasons why we wanted a new site, I can talk to you about that later. But I've got um, a, a big old list here. I can be happy to email anyone later. Uh, but basically just needed a better way to organize flexibility. I needed access to the server, a whole lot of things that I'm used to that we didn't have uh, security issues, um, uh, flexibility layout, just a lot of things. So um, we launched a new site. It's It's been great. We can make faster edits. So hopefully you've been on the website and can see um, the updates and, you know, if you have any feedback, it's welcome. I'm still working on navigation and uh, trying to get things to a place where I'm happy, but uh, it is a work in progress, but I'm uh, open to any and all feedback. So uh, that's where we are with that. Um, marketing is, a, you know, it's an ongoing process, but the goal is to increase awareness you know, of NCI in Virginia uh, and beyond. And as you saw the CNBC article, that's, it's hope, you know, we're getting out, our name's getting out there. Um, we're trying to increase the number of participants in NCI programs. We are trying to, you know, get new partnerships with organizations and, you know, try to get that, the help NCI reach its mission. So, that's the goal. Um, you can see some of the new collateral we've got out there, the annual report picture there, some of the social media stuff. Uh, we've got a great team working on uh, publishing regularly to social media. We've got ads going out in new uh, publications. Coastal Virginia Magazine um, was published, published this month, and then there'll be another ad going out in January, February. So if you get that magazine, look for our ad. Um, Smith Mountain Lake, um, we'll be having an advertising in that. Um, there's uh, got some press releases that are being picked up. So that's been fun. So a lot of great, um, a lot of great, um, I guess NCI is just getting out there. It's been neat hearing people say we we saw your ad in, in this publication or we, we heard about you on the radio. We saw this in this uh, magazine. So it's been neat to see. Hopefully y'all are seeing things as well. So it's been pretty cool. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we are. I don't want to drag out. Um, and then also some of the events, some of you, have, um, we talked some about like pop-up summer camp, some of the local events uh, we've been marketing. And then um, I was trying to think of some of the other things. Recruit Military is a, like most of the events have been virtual. But nevertheless, um, there's still a good like 400 plus attendees at the virtual recruit military event. So we're still able to you know, promote New College Institute online at you know, these virtual events. So it's still a pretty cool way of getting our name out there. So anyway, Mara, I'll hand it over to you and then if anybody has any questions. Great, thanks so much, Rebecca. And thanks for uh, having me today. I've had the pleasure of uh, partnering and supporting NCI's communications and marketing efforts through collaborative since, um, I guess, about February of this year. Um, so it's been a great year. And as Rebecca mentioned, um, really working on uh, focusing communications to reach a variety of different audiences in, in different areas. So going through and looking at the brand and the messages and the look and feel of materials in a way of putting ourselves in the audience point of view to see how that would resonate with them. Um, and so through that process came up with the new branding to be a bit of a little bit more sophisticated and cleaner, um, you know, highlighting the variety of different pathways provided through NCI, and then creating a variety of materials and tactics to push those out through, as she mentioned, brand and uh, websites and media, um, both in, in media pitching stories, which we've uh, seen some um, great coverage and local and even national coverage, which we're thrilled to see. And then even seeing um, the Martinsville Bulletin piece on the wind program getting picked up in the Governor's Week in review. So seeing these ripple effects of communications, um, which we're excited to see. And then really up leveling the social media using both organic posts that we post as well as some um, uh, paid where you can really target in which areas of the state or country, um, you know, ages and sort of uh, skill levels and education um, 
levels to make sure that we're getting messages, the right messages to the right people at the right time. Um, and we look forward to continuing to do that um, ongoing with all these new great opportunities and making sure that um, we're not the best kept secret. So thank you and happy to answer any questions. Any, anyone have any, any questions? You'll notice the new logo. Many of you participated in the vote on the new logo. So we've gone whole hog, if you will, into, into that new branding with a new color scheme. You can see how it translates down into the left-hand corner with some other pieces that we're doing. We will be doing an annual report um, I was the cog in the wheel on getting that ready for you. I think we lost our executive director. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, um, anybody have any questions? Delegate Adams, you're the, you're the outreach chair. Any comments or questions? Uh, thank you for your work, and um, I guess when we get the committee together, um, there'll be some new stuff to, to, to look at and consider, and um, it looks like you're off to a great start. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, that concludes the um, staff updates. I think you can see that we've, we've all been busy. Um, in, in case anybody forgets, we only have about 20 people um, working at NCI, so um, everybody, as I said earlier, has been keeping the, the pedal to the metal, um, and we, we vetoed all vacations. Nobody gets to take vacations anymore. Just kidding. That's not true. But, I guess, uh, um, I guess to get all the <laughs> just make everything remote from here on. You guys have been fantastic. We've we've done a lot, and I, I just again have to thank the staff for their stick to itiveness and tenacity to get us to where we are. Well, and and again, uh, on behalf of the board, I want to thank the staff as well for the hard work they've not. Uh, taking this pandemic, uh, sitting down, um, both yourself, uh, Ms. Jackson, and everyone else has worked so very hard. I mean, uh, this has probably went, been a longer board meeting than usual, but it is chock full of not just information, but of things that we're doing and going to do, and especially the marketing as well. I think it's just a, a fantastic way. I've always said from the chairman's uh, spot that uh, we need to make sure that we're out there, that people see us, that, that grabs their interest and that brings them in. And it certainly looks like uh, this is occurring on a massive scale, which is what we've wanted, what we've always advocated for, was a part of our long range plan, and we're seeing it come to fruition. So I definitely, uh, I mean, I'm just, I've got two pages of notes um, just on one thing alone that was in this uh, update list. So thank you again to the staff and those great, uh, Madam Executive Director. The only question I have is, have we, where are we with regard to the Newport News shipbuildings, uh, 3D shipbuilding program? We had signed an MOU the board had and the executive director had. Uh, has that come along? I know they've had some kind of slowdowns on implementation through the community college out there in Old Dominion. Can you tell me, just give us maybe an update of where we are with that, or is that still a part of this regime? Um, I, I think one of, the, one of the things we've taken away from this um, experience generally is kind of lead, follow, or get out of our way has been the approach that we've taken to how we've moved forward. Um, Newport News and ODU seem to have hit a slog when it comes to their relationship and their part of the, the digital shipbuilding arrangement. And so that has been quiet for the last three or four months. I've checked with some folks at NNS and there were some, I, be I believe, I'm, in, I'm, I'm interpreting, I'm not speaking for them, obviously. Um, I believe there was frustrated relationships with ODU. And so that ball has been left in their court. Um, I, we weren't in a position to move it forward on concentrating on things we could affect and, and just keeping a finger on the pulse, but have not seen any movement in a couple of months. Okay, well, let's hope that continues. I would think that would be an excellent add-on to what we've already talked about that we have already in the pipeline. Uh, next, uh, we'll move down yeah, to- Yeah, we will. Go ahead, please. Sorry, no, I was just gonna add, we will be bringing the trailer back out regardless. Um, we got. That was on the docket for this year, and, and with the schools going virtual, we had to cancel. Okay, fantastic. All right, now um, we're going to go to the budget update. Usually, ladies and gentlemen, what we have is uh, Christina Reed will give us the budget update. 
let us know all the great things that are happening with her management of our money and the, and the state taxpayer money. Uh, she's had some medical issue surgery, so she couldn't be with us today. But, you know, when we've thanked the staff and we thank the people that have done so much with regard to all of the things, even bringing home the purchase of the, uh, of the building for NCI, um, she's really one of those unsung heroes that has been such an important part of New College Institute. Uh, Christina Reed, I call her numbers. That's her nickname that I gave her. But um, she is fantastic and has been a wonderful uh, uh, instrument for New College and an important part of New College and will continue to be uh, that way for many years to come. So I understand that someone else is going to be offering a budget update, but we will all pray for Christina. And, and if you give it, get a chance and you see her, thank her for her great efforts and everything that she does for me and for everybody else. So, uh, Madam so Mr. Chairman, Director, who is giving I'm gonna, <laughs> I am, and it's going to be very brief. Um, we've already covered the CARES Act funding. Um, we are, the, the bottom line message is we haven't overspent. We're on budget. Um, you received the financials in your board packet. Um, we are on track for, you know, to spend down what we have been allotted. Um, the grant monies that come in, we manage appropriately for the things that we've said we're going to use the grant money for. So all of those are accounted for. And so we will be and have submitted to the um, governor's office for consideration for the upcoming legislative session and the budget, um, some requests for additional positions um, and associated funding. And I'll be providing that information to the legislative members of the board separately as soon as I, we've just submitted them. So I'll be getting those to you for consideration. And um, you can't, we can't continue to do all of the things at the pace we're doing them without some additional positions to help us out. And so, you know, right now, most of those additional positions are grant funded and we need to make sure some of them move onto the, onto the classified side so that we have a little bit more continuity. Um, other than that, there's no surprises in the budget, no, no Achilles heel, everything's running as um, supposed to on budget, on time or ahead of schedule. So um, if you have any specific financial questions, please let me know and I will answer them directly. But otherwise we are, we're in good fiscal shape um, and I will be providing additional requests for the updated, for the upcoming session um, to the legislative members in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Director. Uh, Christina Reed does always a great job keeping us within the rails financially and, uh, and is a great steward with the taxpayer money. And I appreciate that again. Uh, at this time, if you notice on your, we've got just a couple uh, items left. One is we're going to have to uh, go into closed session for um, matters of real estate and for employment. Um, council, is there someone here to read uh, the motion uh, that will allow us to go into closed session? And I don't know how we're gonna coordinate this with the Zoom call. Um, but uh, hopefully somebody's got a way of handling I can it. read that, Chairman. Okay. That's acceptable. And Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hall. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, delegate Mr. out. The, yeah, I, I'm going to have to go off. I've got another meeting coming on, so maybe now's a good time instead of doing that in between these two um, legal calls. Hang on a second. We may need your vote. Do we need his vote? Do you? Yeah. We, um, we have eight active members. We need six, right? You need a majority, so you oh. need, well, you we need have your five. <laughs> well, I can get us into closed session if you All can. Right, let's just, if we can do this really quickly, Les, I'm sorry about that. Can you just hang on with it's us okay. for a second? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Hall, if you'll read, do you have a motion for the board? Of course, yes, sir. Uh, this is Richard. I move that the Board of Directors of New College Institute convene a closed meeting pursuant to 2.2-3711A and 2.2-3711A5 and 2.2-3711A8 for discussion of real estate acquisition, prospective business, industry matters, and consultation with legal counsel, more specifically the update of real, real estate closing and discussion of prospective, prospective lease of real property, which will be owned by the Institute. The motion requires a vote and a second. Do I have a second to the motion being made to go into closed session? I see a hand raised. Uh, Delegate Murphy is um, Second. seconded the motion. Um, 
now that there's a second, is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, uh, this requires a roll call vote. Chris, if you could read the roll call. Senator Stanley. Aye. This is Deb Love. Yeah, oh, uh-oh. Did I hear hey. the ghost of Deb Love? Yes. Yeah, did that motion include personnel? Yes, there's a second motion. Okay. So we're so, doing separate motions for one closed session. Okay. I mean, I, I typically do for each topic, we do them all at the same time and then go into close. Oh, okay. So, so there's a second motion. Okay, this is I can read the set. Is this a certification motion? No, it's the second motion below number four. All right, I can read that as well. Please, please do. I move that the board of directors of New College Institute <laughs> being a closed meeting pursuant to 2.2-3711A1, 2.2-3711A8 for discussion of personnel matters and consultation with legal counsel, more specifically discussion of the executive director's evaluation and contract. And, uh, and for that purposes of that motion, instead of two separate motions, which we'd have to take individually, Mr. Hall, are you amending your original motion to include this language that you've just read? I am, so we can do this in one vote. Okay, and I'll need, then I will need a second to the amendment. Second. Delegate Murphy providing a, a, a second to the amendment, uh, the, amend, the amendment to the motion. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Senator Bill Stanley. Aye. Richard Paul. Aye. Senator Emmett Hanger. Aye. Delegate Les Adams. Aye. Delegate Rodney Willett. Aye. Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Aye. Naomi Hodge Muse. Aye. Trene Aye. Tweedy. Trene Tweedy. I think we're getting her, but I can't hear her. She was muted. Okay. Renee Tweedy. She's no longer on the board. Okay. No, Trene is. I'm sorry, I apologize. Trene is. I apologize. Mayor Tweedy, can you hear us? Hey, please. You can't say I if you make a sound like a car. We'll take that as an I. <laughs> or a squeak. <laughs> okay. Chris, do we have enough of a quorum to go in this, to close? Yes, sir, you do. Okay, let's go into closed session this time. The motion is passed. And so at this point in time, the New College Institute Board of Directors will go into closed session for the purpose oh, yeah. of discussing matters as described in the motion as amended. Uh, and anyone who is not a member of that board uh, shall be excluded <laughs> from participation and or listening uh, to these matters. And whoever then controls the key here. Um, hey, Ray. Okay. I, I am going to stop the recording and then move the board members uh, to a, a separate breakout room. Uh, thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. So everyone should just stay on the line. Uh, recording has been resumed. Okay, this is Les Adams. I think I've been transported from closed to open. Yes, we're all closed. I think we're everybody here. Uh, uh, Mr. Hall, do you have a motion to return to open session, understanding that, um, well, I guess it's it's for both. So do you have a motion to return us to open session? Mr. Hall. I'm sorry, sir, I, I didn't hear anything there for a second. Do we have a motion to return to open session? A yes, certification. make a motion to return to open session as quickly as possible. Okay, a certification motion then do you have? Yes, let me read said motion. Whereas the board of directors of the New College Institute convened in a closed meeting on October 
20th, 2020, and 20, uh, October 20th, 2020, pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provision of Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Now be it resolved in accordance with Virginia Code 2.2-3712 that the Board of Directors of New College Institute hereby certifies to the best of each member's knowledge. Only business matters matter, only business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under Virginia law and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed meeting. Motion requires a second and a roll call vote. Is there a second to the, his motion? His certification. Second being uh, made by Delegate Murphy. Uh, is there any discussion about that motion? Senator Stanley, on? Senator Stanley, it's Deb Love. I think the date that we cited in the motion was intended to be November 30th of 2020. Yes. Well, we were all transported off into a private area. It might have been on October 20th, and we didn't know it. Uh, Mr. Hall, would you like to amend your motion? I'm amending my said motion for November 30th, 2020. 2020. Okay. Um, Good job of reading, not paying attention. Uh, is there a second on the amended, the motion as amended? Delegate Murphy again seconds the uh, a motion as amended. Is there any discussion on that motion? Thank you, Ms. Love. I appreciate it greatly. Seeing none, hearing none, uh, Ms. Niblett, can you call the roll, please? Senator Bill Stanley. Here. Aye. Certified. Richard Hall. Aye. Senator Emmett Hanger. Aye. Delegate Les Adams. Aye. Delegate Rodney Willett. Aye. Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Aye. Naomi Hodge Muse. Aye. Thank you. Okay, and so so the closed session has been certified. Uh, uh, after discussion in the closed session, I would entertain a motion that basically would give the authority to our executive director, interim executive director, and the Department of General Services (DGS) to negotiate and execute a a, a lease agreement with the current tenant tenant of the of the Baldwin Block building that is the EDC of Henry County and Martinsville, and to do so in a manner agreeable to all parties. Is, is there someone who would make that motion? I Delegate will. Murphy, my favorite. Delegate Murphy makes the motion. Is there a second to her motion? I second Naomi. Naomi Hajime is properly seconds the motion. Uh, that motion is supported by a second. So is there any discussion on what we've just said? Hearing no discussion. All in favor of the motion as uh, as given by Delegate Murphy, uh, respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the same sign. And that motion carries unanimously. I believe uh, from the discussions that we had also too, uh, that uh, we have a motion with regard to our interim executive director. And that motion I believe made by someone here would be to extend her contract uh, and to have the attorney general's office to extend her contract uh, for one year up to the, the rate of pay as determined by the General Assembly uh, in this past regular session and its, uh, and its budget. And, uh, and that, uh, that I be permitted to negotiate and execute, that I as chairman be permitted to negotiate and execute said contract between uh, the New College Institute Board of Directors and the Interim Executive Director, uh, Karen Jackson. Is is that the motion, Deb? Have I gotten it? Yes, sir. Okay. And so would anybody like to make that motion for me? Delegate Murphy? Yes. Delegate Murphy makes the motion. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. A second properly uh, supported by Naomi Hodge-Muse. Uh, is there any discussion about this? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? will signify by saying aye, 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 all opposed, same sign. And that motion carries unanimously. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that's all I have. Uh, Madam Interim Executive Director, do you have any additional matters that we have not discussed? Mr. Chairman, just a, a question for council, if I may. Um, there was a question amongst the staff during the closed session as to whether or not we needed any 
motion or official action on the budget update. I don't believe we need anything. We have no alterations. We have nothing right. that's changing. So we shouldn't oh, need any. We shouldn't need any actions, correct? Now, since you're not approving a new budget and you are only offering for informational purposes, you don't need to make a vote or any action. Yes. That's, that that's was my, that was my thought as well. I just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and again, uh, at this point in time, if there's anybody from the public who would like to make public comment or ask a question, we would allow them to do so. Is that correct, Ms. Taylor? Uh, yes, uh, I think, um, I think Chris may have um, required that they register for the public comment period. See okay. if she had any. Yes, that is correct. And at this time, we do not have any public comment. <coughs> okay, very good. So ladies and gentlemen, I know the hour is late. We've spent three hours today, but what an important meeting this turned out to be to see the progress of NCI. We had a lot of business that we had to take care of. So I appreciate not only your patience and dedication, but also your efforts on behalf of the New College Institute and bringing top-notch educational opportunities here to Southside and Southwest Virginia. I cannot thank enough uh, Deb Love and, and Ramona Taylor, our, our ABLE counsel. They show what lawyers really should be and how we should act. Uh, and so I learn a lot from them. And someday when I grow up, I want to be just like them. Uh, they're perfect. I want to thank the staff. Who's thank you. Nobly, absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris, you've done a wonderful job. Steve, everybody, I mean, I could sit here and, and list everybody and, and it would take me 10 minutes, but every one member of the staff. To Christina Reed, uh, please tell her to get well. Uh, we missed her. She's an integral part of what we do here. And to all our new uh, delegates who are now members of this board, I can't thank you enough. It's always great to see uh, Delegate Willett and Delegate Murphy um, uh, here with us. And we can't wait to have you down in uh, Southside and Southwest Virginia down here at NCI uh, very soon once this crazy pandemic is over with. Uh, Delegate Adams, uh, Senator Hanger, appreciate all your help too. Uh, Tewe, it was uh, wonderfully, uh, masterfully uh, handled. Um, no glitches whatsoever. And uh, so I thank you, my friend, for everything you're doing for us as well. Uh, does any board member have any other comment they'd like to make before I uh, entertain a motion uh, for, uh, uh, to adjourn? Y'all are just tuckered and tired out. I get it. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> yeah, I'll get Murphy makes the motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second by, by Mr. Hall. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor until we see each other again. Hopefully not aye. in free style. Aye. Aye. All Thank in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign and this Mona. meeting is adjourned. Thank you all so very much and once again. Bye everybody. Bye guys. Everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Have a great holiday, everyone. Everybody have a happy Bye. holiday. Be safe. Yes. Be safe. Yes, you too.